Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to RL Aftershock, the longest running independent podcast for everything that is Rocket League esports in the European scene. Here for, I think, the penultimate show of the year, something along those lines, Bacon. Uh, we're probably going to do like an, a, a year long or decade long recap yeah, we'll of some sort. Yeah, we'll try and find one next week we can fit in, but it's like sometime. I'd imagine it'd probably be like the Saturday or Sunday next week, right, Jay? Because. Hmm. Well, ne next Thursday is Boxing Day, and I'm sure we're probably busy with family stuff then, so ain't going to happen next Thursday. <laughs> yeah, if anything, like, the most likely date will be like uh, like a, a Christmas Eve sort of show, like, you know, like on, on the Tuesday, like we used to have the show on, on Tuesdays back could in the do. day. Uh, so we, we could do that. I'm not really sure. I mean, uh, Actually, honestly. No, I'm out Christmas Eve, unfortunately, with friends. Ah, 27th, I can do. Next Friday, you bastard! I'm sure we'll figure something out along those lines. As uh, of course, we do want to do a final year-long recap show before mm -hmm. we enter the new decade. It's going to be real fun indeed. As for, for today, though, however, and for this week, we are going to be taking a look at the World Championships, as you may have probably been able to predict. Oh, yes. um, uh, uh, I'm going to also apologize in advance. My headspace is completely fucked this week. Um, uh, I'm still recovering from Madrid. I won't lie. Um, uh, I honestly thought I got over the initial hangover from the flight back on Monday, and then the post under pressure <laughs> from Tuesday and Wednesday. But it's hit me like a fucking freight train today. So if I start chatting shit, feel free to interrupt me and let me know that I'm just being a complete fucking idiot. Can we like somehow get tracked to the get a soundboard, just like a slapping sound, just <laughs> and the wake up, Jane, and that scared it, the shit that, out of my dog. That shit hit like a fucking freight train, mate. Like, that, that was really fucking loud for your own right. But yes, <laughs> we're talking all about the next season of the RS RLCS as well because the details were announced partway through the land, and of course, our Ooh, winners. Baby. Lose and the prediction game from this past gone weekend RLCS World Championship live from Madrid. Let's start things off and kick things off with Le News. And of course, I did mention that RLCS Season 9 has been announced, so of course we'll talk through all of those details. The rulebook is currently officially alive essentially like you can go to the website uh, rocketleagueesports.com slash s9 dash rules and you'll be able to find all the rules sets and all the dates essentially for the um, uh, 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 for the next season of the world championship in particular I'm going to highlight two very specific uh, sections of the rule book the first one being 2.2.1 which is the regional dates for the uh, 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 for each of the respective sort of um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, for each of the respective sort of uh, you know uh, regions and for the European EU. Yeah. yeah, for Europe, it's re for, yeah. Oh, fuck me. <laughs> I told you it's going to be a trade record episode. <laughs> in particular, the open qualifiers run from January 19th to January 26th. The rival series planes will be on the February the second, and then week one of the RLCS begins on the same day. Oh, yep. Uh, what? Okay, I didn't see that part. Holy shit, that's um uh, interesting. So looking at this, Jay, and it's sort of like been eyed up i would argue last season we had uh rival esports running the planes didn't we so are we going to get a similar state of rival hanging on to those planes and then of course the rlcs stream being directly after it the plane's going to take uh, place you know earlier on in the day let me just quickly double check so i'm pretty sure the second is a sunday because we always play on that yes a sunday so you'd imagine the rival series planes would be taking place let's say from midday finished by about Four or five o'clock in the afternoon, then directly after that is when the RCS will be beginning. I quite like that. That's going to be a beefy old day of Rocket League action. That's curious, though, because it's like, will they be able, will they allow us to stream the uh, the play in action? Like, obviously, we mentioned last season that they did, but that's because the plans were on a, a completely separate day versus this one where, I mean, we know what Psyonix are like when it comes to, like, scheduling tournaments in between the RLCS phases. You know, that's what got Zedland cancelled, for example. Mm -hmm. um, they got several other tournaments cancelled that we talked about on the show before. Um, uh, uh, and for this one, it's like, does that also mean that the rival series will not be streamed even by rival esports, for example? So... I know you always call me naive, Jay, but I can't seriously see Sonics being that dumb. No, they, this will be done. Like I said, can. it'll be on two <laughs> different. It'll be on two different streams. Again, it there'll be, like I said, probably rival once again because they did a stellar job last season. Everything seemed to go quite smoothly, and then it'll be a throw over about thirty minutes before the start of RLCS and. It, that would be late case scenario. Generally, with scheduling, as we saw with uh, the B stream um, last season, there's an hour to two hour gap already scheduled there between them. It will just mean that I can imagine the rival series planes will start very early on that Sunday. 
Well, uh, well, I guess time will tell. To be honest, like obviously we'll probably mm-hmm. we'll probably be shooing to sort of do that whole broadcast because you know last season I did the whole seven match uh, shebang when we did the uh, rival series plans, which was a lot of fun uh, with rival esports. Uh, hopefully we we'll get the chance to do that again because mm-hmm. uh, you know I, I think it would be very remiss as you mentioned. Uh, Baker, can you also do me a favor and turn your game down because you are fucking loud and distorting the mic beyond belief. So uh, just just do me a, just do me a favor, crank that down a little bit because that was uh, th- that was that was uh, that was quite a. Uh, uh... Oh boy, how did that get so high? Yes, <laughs> I understand now, looking at that. Yes. Oh, sorry. dear, oh, dear. Anyways, uh, but yes, other dates include, of course, the uh, uh, the Rival Series uh, uh, dates, which start from February the 2nd. Uh, 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 yeah, uh, sorry. Sorry, sorry, February the 7th, excuse me. I, I, I fucked it up entirely. Mm-hmm. Which, of course, again, lines up to the Friday that uh, we usually see out of all of the, uh, out of all the Rival Series uh, 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 dates. The other key thing to remember as well is the fact that now RLCS and Rival Series have been extended to, uh, well, seven weeks in the case of Rival Series of, uh, 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 of action, uh, which, of course, means that the... Uh, uh, and eight weeks of action uh, from, the, uh, from the RLCS level of things, where they uh, are a, a, a European regional... Um, uh, a European regional sort of uh, fucking uh, 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 a, a European regional thing taking place after the ninth week or on the ninth yeah. week is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> yeah, so it's pretty much the exact same format apart from adding the two on the end. Uh, and yeah, going to eight weeks, I'm trying to think numbers in my head, but this will pretty much line up to about five matches each day instead of having those weeks where it's pushed to six for the last two. Um, it was a nice round number, and I'd imagine this is so that it's not cramped into the seven. Pretty simple format, and yeah, finally we're getting the adjustment to 10 teams. We knew it was coming because last season we had the two added extra, and it's going to be an interesting one, but that leads on to a following point, doesn't it, Jay? Does it? Um... <laughs> Auto promotion. You oh, really yeah. are not in the zone, I'm, dude. Yeah, I, I, I did say like I'm, I'm fucking completely out of it today. I am, I am so fucking drained, or as it stands already. But yes, you are, you, you are right. Auto promotion is now a thing as part of the rule sets. Uh, this is section two point three point one point three and two point three point two point one. That's a lot of decimal points there, Bacon. Um, but uh, you can rule see sets. obviously the, uh, the, the rule sets for the rival series. Mm-hmm. Uh, 2.3.1.3 uh, Rival Series League players around Robin blah 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 blah, blah. Um, uh, it says rankings will be determined by comparing the total match number of wins uh, uh, during the Rival Series uh, if a team is qualified by, uh, from a match by the, by, by the Psionics and or admin administrator the match will be recorded as a 3-0 win in favour of the opposing team the team that finishes first place in Rival Series League play will promote to RLCS League play for Season 10 this is exactly the kind of thing that we were talking about here mm-hmm. I think that this is a fucking massive addition this is exactly the kind of thing that we sort of like you know push when Veloshem had their auto promotion stint um yep. it's just brilliant absolutely brilliant this is exactly what I was hoping to see this season yeah and like don't get me wrong before this we were calling for two up two down as auto promotion but we can understand keeping it just to one can't we Jay purely I'm happy with one up one down honestly I'm happy with yeah that. I'm fine with it like don't get me wrong I'd much prefer two up two down purely for competition's sake but here with Sonics we know that a big deal of it is orgs coming on in so that they get a team in the RLCS and they've got a better chance of securing that for the following season so of course it's natural to go with this rule in and like I said I'm I'm fine they've got the auto promotion they've got the regional playoffs which are sticking uh that'll be second and third going up against ninth and eighth which we're happy with because that gives the potential each season for three teams to go up and down and I think that's enough movement about yeah absolutely again I think this is a massive change and obviously we know exactly when the dates of the RLCS are going to come by so we won't even have that much downtime between seasons this time mm. which is kind of fucking cool um uh, obviously I know that they're trying to make space for the um uh, for the Intel World Open yep um uh, and there might be quite a little bit of space between season 9 and season 10 of the RLCS going into next year um uh, uh, but you know obviously this is this is big obviously we know exactly what's going to happen we've got more weeks of league play so even more content um uh, I, I the only the only sort of, sort of like downside i can think of is the fact we also have eight uh, uh eight weeks of uh, rival series play which means the b stream could be going away which is uh, a little bit sad i think um because i feel like the uh, I, I, I feel like um i feel like the b stream was pretty fucking uh, w- w- was pretty fucking cool 
I call the, it on the beach stream community. probably isn't going away. We we know that. Like at the moment, the number of games that are required to play, it feels like the B stream is just an easy way for Sonics to outsource a lot of the B stream action and keep you know eyes on it for Friday to warm people up for the weekend. Uh, for me, the big interesting thing, like you said, you picked up on it just there. The Kavitsa, uh closed qualifiers, the open qualifiers, and of course the live event in Tokyo Olympics Intel Open coming up. That is going to be massive because that takes place, if I am correct, largely around May and June, uh, with the open qualifiers being, of course, before that. That then gives like a ton of space, let's say July, um, August, September, before this, n the next season, season 10 of RSS comes around again. So that's a big chunk of off season. I wonder what's going on in that space. I think we'll see. Um, uh, uh, I think also there's also, also you'll make space for World Championship, for example. You know, yeah. so there might be a little, a little bit something there as well. Um, uh, of course, the World Championship has not been announced as of right now. But if they do anything like the re previous cycle, it, it could be a uh, um, uh, it, it could still well be a, a, a thing. Um, uh, mm -hmm. But the thing about it is that obviously um, I'm talking about uh, the eight weeks thing uh, of, of, of league play, and it's like, well, this season around, like for me, it feels like that this is going to be the B stream going away because now this is an upgrade from essentially uh, f from five weeks to eight weeks. And I think if you do the maths correctly, you should just about be able to fit everything in. Um, uh, I mean, you can correct me if I'm wrong, potentially. I mean, uh, it, 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 I haven't done the specific maths, but to me, it feels like this is so kind of like going to be a... Uh, 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 the, 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 this could, at the very least, be a reduction in what the B-Stream is doing. Yeah, I think it will be a reduction because what uh, beforehand, it was four games each week for the RORS on the mainstream, whereas... And I am going to quickly, you know, check this because... What, we've got the stats here. We've got Liquipedia. Hey, great stuff. I saw something crazy from Lucas posting on today of how they're yeah, expected to break 20, 20 million, million, million fucking views, views. Or 20 million yep. sort of like uh, impressions on the fucking uh, Liquipedia page for yeah. the Rocket League, which is awesome. I think I might just start clicking through some articles to try and inflate that, which would be mm -hmm. quite fun. But yeah, <laughs> anyway, uh, this is looking at the moment. Like each week, of course, had four on the broadcast and then five off broadcast, um, not including the week zero matches which were done which were five of course beforehand so that results in a total of da, 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 5 10 15 20 25 games sorry that was really bad of me uh 25 games being played on b stream now i could see them maybe cutting that down to three games on the b stream each week something like that trying to shift on over because at the moment i can't realistically see them doing more than four games on the mainstream each week purely because you know they've got to do europe and then the same cast as later on have to do america as well so i reckon it'll still stay with four they're just adding on an extra couple of weeks and then it's it's dropping the load that's on the B stream because you've got to remember each week as well had a silent game or it, it's called a silent game. It was a game that was posted out just before, you know, and wasn't amongst the rest on the B stream. It was uh, done and recorded. Everyone knew about this, uh, but just to fill in so that it made it easier for players to, that needed that reschedule. So I reckon that silent game will probably go away. Hmm. Uh, we'll, 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 we'll see again. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be skeptically cautious about this. And obviously, for obvious reasons, we were heavily involved in the B-Stream for last season. So we'll see whether or not we are for this season. Uh, although, judging from some of the comments we're about to make, maybe that might not end up happening. Because our next story relates to this uh, fun little interview posted by DailyEsports.gg. Mm-hmm. On the surface, it looks like a pretty innocent little interview. Um, uh, it's uh, by esports manager, uh, the, the science manager of esports, Josh Watson. Um, uh, the headline in particular is the uh, is is for regional land, saying, "quote Regional land is on our radar." Um, uh, for the context of this, uh, the question of it was in relation to um, uh, 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 a land league play, and they said it's probably not going to happen due to the age of our uh, of our athletes. Um, uh, and then, obviously, the follow-up question was, "Is it maybe more realistic to look at ran land regional?" and it's like well the quote we've looked at how the postseason works and if that's an option uh, and if that's an option i'm not a legal scholar or anything but i think that's probably an easier thing to do in terms of legality ultimately we're always trying to look for ways to improve things so that's definitely on our radar it's not a confirmation per se but uh, mm -hmm. i wanted to highlight this interview anyway um uh, uh, because there are a couple different things that we're able to pick apart from reading it uh in particular 
two things that kind of jumped out to me that was like, okay, that's fucking concerning. Um, uh, the, the first thing is psionics aren't really worried about organizations that leave the space for all intents and mm. purposes. Uh, he pretty much said this out and out, essentially, when... Um, uh, uh, let me see if I can find the uh, thing. Uh, the question was, how do you uh, how do you handle a big organization leaving the scene? Does that personally worry you? And he says, I don't worry about it per se. He says that they try and establish relationships between the organizations, which we can pretty much prove with Flipside Tactics is actually complete bullshit. Yep. Um, uh, so this definitely feels like a, uh, a, a a PR statement just to fucking you know uh, j- just to get it just to get this whole thing off their backs. Yeah, a lot of this for me worries me a little bit with how disjoint it is. Uh, a big one just above that, uh, you can just see it on the screen, is are there any plans for Fennec esports items? And you have, uh, we've seen the Fennec has become more popular. Honestly, I haven't looked too much into the data around that. And for me, that sort of just looks a little bit worrying when you've got the you know director there that's or the manager of esports not looking at the data of items to try and progress those esports items it's all very weird and disjointed and i don't really know what's going through you know the plans for psionics at the moment the league play i uh the land sorry for regionals i think is more of just a statement to get people's hopes up saying yeah. it could happen well, it's not going to happen that's... we're going both ways and it just all seems very wishy-washy well, that's what we said. Uh, um, uh, uh, that's what we said about um, fucking. Um, what, what, what was it? That's what we said about the about, about the headline. Obviously, the headline is grabbing that mm-hmm. quote and saying, "Look, this could be a thing." When the truth is, is that actually it probably wouldn't be a thing, uh, especially based off of this. As you said, you know, if, they ha- if they're not looking at some of the stuff that we're demanding for, like you know, mm-hmm. I, I, I wish there was also a question about the EU studio because I would have loved to have heard what his response to that whole thing yeah. is. Uh, the other thing as well, I mean, again, just to, just to drill this whole idea of, uh, of essentially all his answers being a PR answer. There was also another question. If you scroll further up, we recently saw three OGs at a one v one scene in. Fair- Peak Scrub Killer and OSM retire from ones due to lack of support. Do you think there'll ever be a time where 1v1 is also covered in the RLCS? This particular answer essentially said, I don't think it would happen for RLCS. Um, uh, 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 but but it, it, it essentially, it was essentially the PR. The, the, it, it, essentially, his answer was the PR equivalent of "We don't have a fucking idea." Uh, mm. Essentially, um, uh, and uh, it, the second paragraph in particular is fucking entertaining. Uh, quote: When we look at the engagement around that mode in game, we certainly see that doubles is higher in played game mode. But that's not to say it's the only factor. I don't understand why Psionics are basing their esports operations off the playlists of the matchmaking yep. system. Like, that's not how it works, essentially. <laughs> like, 3v3 is the established mode because the pros decided for it, because that was the format that was put in some of the earlier tournaments on like the ESL weeklies, the Gfinity weeklies, the RLC Pro League, etc. All these things that came around before RLCS was even a thing. So why we're looking at 2v2 in that particular conversation, when 1v1, I'd say, has probably contributed a lot more to the professional scene than the 2v2 v2 thing has yeah definitely and agreeing to that of i think the thing that science has missed out here is that yes you don't need to make one v one's its own thing just tack it on do everything online as a little sub project uh with the one v one worlds and then when it comes to rlcs you have a show match top four go through if they're already in teams there which mostly they will be fucking ace if not what you gotta do is pay for let's just say three out of the four players to come along to land as well and you just host it as a little show match that... uh-oh Instant second gun gone. Oh. oh i'm back yeah are you back yep i don't okay. know what <laughs> don't know how long i was gone there for yeah, Sorry. Uh, just for a, a couple moment. seconds back now, so. uh, but basically yeah it, it can be easily tapped on you see a lot of show matches go on in other games let's just take cs because that's the one where you always use as an example and it can have that same sort of feel but it gives the 1v1 community something to gun for and be on the same stage as rlcs but it's in its own climate i think that would be the best direction to take ones and this is also off the back of like you know previous pretty good support you know like obviously Johnny mm-hmm. Boy was running his sort of like invitational tournaments which I think was he really good for the one him. scene. <laughs> uh, essentially, you know, it's actually a lot of people are able to live off that. You know, Johnny obviously making subscription monies, and of course, uh, some don't. I think some of that some of that goes to a cut of the prize pool for the sake of the players themselves, which I think is really cool. But even then, you remember League of Rockets uh, mm-hmm. and their little um uh, uh, and and their what was it the one v one tournament called? I keep forgetting the name. I think it's Twelve Titans. Twelve Titans. If I recall yeah. yeah, that shit was was a really fucking cool initiative. I think it was a great little creation little project as well as not only as well as being you know one of the key sort of like mountains of the 1v1 scene essentially 
And again, mm. you take a look at some of the guys that they mentioned in the, in this article, Fairy Peak, Scrub Killer, OSM, just three examples of really good players, two of which are playing at the top, highest possible level of Rocket League professionally, and they're not being allowed... And and, 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 and the, the scene that gave, that gave birth to those talents is not being allowed to flourish, essentially. And the response from Psyonix, I think, is pretty fucking pathetic. Um, there's another interview that I found out about, um, uh, and to the, the, to the person who particularly conducted this interview... Um, um, I, I wish you published this before the show because I would have absolutely loved to break it down based off the responses that I've heard of that particular interview. Uh, if I, I, I don't know if he's even going to be published at this stage at all, to be honest, because it's a Rocketeers article. And I know that Rocketeers love to suck that psionics dick. Um, and... Um, uh, do you know what? Like, even if it's self-published, I would absolutely love to have it on the show. I'd love to have it on Aftershock because mm. um, I think that was a much more... Uh, I think that was a much more fucking... Um, I, I feel like it was a much more like... Um, appropriate interview to talk about in terms of the state of the Rocket League esports management, essentially. And it was with mm. Josh Wood again, so, you know, just a, just a full, full transparency. Yeah, on that he did a fair few interviews over the weekend. Again, the, the thing that I think hurts us most, Jay, with this is we look at this and it is just all PR nothingness. Yeah. When you're asking some very serious questions here, which would affect the whole landscape. And, and again, I wish this other interview was published by now because that mm. way we could take a look at that and really highlight the issues right now with the Rocket League scene. Mm. And yeah, when it comes to it, just go back onto the main uh, point that started off. Uh, LAN regionals, that's a possibility, but I reckon that's just as possible as getting an EU studio. So mm, yeah. who fucking knows at this point? <laughs> Infinity. <laughs> Anyway, let's move on and uh, talk about some other land stuff, in particular the uh, World Championship viewing figures that were released and played its way to the Reddit, which this is a bit of a positive new, a positive piece of news, I guess, to end on. Mm-hmm. Uh, because um, uh, you know, although we have talked about a couple of negative issues and obviously the uh, uh, you know some of the some of the things that you had kind of give it a little bit of punditry, but these stats are awesome for the game. Um, uh, uh, season eight world championship is the highest viewed peak in all of Rocket League's Ooh. RLCS uh, competition. Two hundred eighty thousand four hundred ninety five viewers at I believe it was the end of the grand final somewhere close yep. towards it um uh, which was the peak which was the peak number essentially for uh, uh, uh for the land event um which obviously is a fantastic thing because that is the highest thing ever beating out the season three world championship which was up until this point the highest viewed world 206,570 viewers um which indicates growth for the rocket league scene and obviously that's a great number to see for us because we've been very uh, we've been given a lot of reasons to doubt the idea that rocket league esports is growing over mm. the past year essentially so to see it actually put into practice in utilized here um as well as beating up the season seven world championship by like essentially like seventy-eight thousand viewers that's awesome that's really fucking cool when you know credit to the eu scene for making that land what it was essentially yeah it's just easy to see here season two of course you saw that massive jump to season three when i thought rocket league could really hit its peak and then it sort of like just mellowed out uh stagnated season four five six all the way down there season seven we saw a little bit of a resurgence and that was epic we thought that was just like a one off resurgence but this jump up to season eight now jay you must remember on day one of LAN afterwards us all going back to the flat and just looking up and seeing that there was a peak on day one of a hundred and eighty thousand people on a concurrent viewer we're all there going that has just smashed everything previously out of the park this is awesome and of course where yeah. we're in the arena we don't know those stats we didn't know until after the third day and i remember just uh getting this number when i was at the airport on my way home uh, monday evening so this has been fantastic and i love the I'm going to say output on Twitter afterwards where you had people like, uh, say, Slasher putting, why is, so yeah, uh, why man, is this like not fucking... a T1 eSport when it's the most hype? You've got so many different people like Shroud, uh, Summit, 1G, all of that lot going, Rock League is epic. Why is this not even more in the forefront of people's minds? There was even FIFA pro players going rock league is the best football game there is exactly you know? and that's that's how you know we fucking oh. peaked right when the people in a competing uh, fucking football based esport are saying rocket league is the shit you've got this down mm. pat you've got this down pat it's fucking awesome but um uh, yeah no i mean i guess we can sort of use that to segue into the uh, into the world championship as a whole obviously because mm -hmm. um, um you know oh, no no mailbag this week by the way guys we didn't get any questions i think everyone's just kind of tired out from the land final so 
I'll let it slide, but if you do want to send in any mailbag questions for the final shock episode, then feel free to do that. Uh, again, the Discord links are in the video yes. description, show notes every single episode of the podcast. If you're watching on Twitch, there's exclamation mark Discord in the Twitch chat. But I guess we can, of course, move on to talk about the World Championship. This was RLCS, uh, the RLCS uh, Season 8 World Championship, of course, as we all know. Um, well, I want to start actually with that point that you made there, actually, because like, obviously there was a lot of like mainstream esports attention, I want to say, given to us. You know, so many people coming out of the mm -hmm. world, because you mentioned Slash was one of those guys, Adam Fitch was another, who uh, got very, very quickly briefed on exactly why Rocket League is not a tier one esports, essentially. <laughs> and on that note, actually, I will say that there was uh, a certain journalist, I'm not going to say his name, that was uh, in, in my DMs after the fact, uh, asking me about like helping out the Rocket League scene. I'm just like, fuck yeah, I'm down to do whatever is necessary to give this shit the yeah. fucking. Uh, boost it needs so it's not like th this world championship is landmark in the sense that it's given a lot more exposure to rocket league esports than any other world championship has been essentially um uh, and mm. i think that obviously seeing that reaction on social media seeing the numbers posted up it's a pretty big thing for all things considered for rocket league esports as a whole i think this has got to be the turning point with the response after this that Sinex finally goes okay we need to start letting things run outside. And this is partly why I was saying I'm so excited for that uh, period of July, August and September of what could be put up there. Because at the moment, to me, that looks like that's a dead region. Uh, you could see maybe a dream hack or two because that in that space you have both Valencia and Montreal for next season. So we could see a return to DreamHack. I doubt there's going to be anything before that purely because it will coincide with RLCS and the... Uh, ESL World Championship, whatever. I can't remember the top top of my head what the Olympics tournament is actually called. Um, but I'd imagine Science didn't want anything conflicting with those, you know? But that period there is free open game at the moment and whoever can come in with the best like pitch for science because they like to just focus on the top end which we're starting to understand and you know somehow put up with but that period could be super cool. Yeah, well, I mean, let's move on to talk about the actual event itself, obviously. It was uh, really fucking cool to see the outside response. But inside the event itself, I want to say that logistically, this was the worst RLCS ever. Oh, yes. Um, <laughs> to, to, to say the least. Again, the match quality was pretty good. Do you know what? A number of, number of bangers on that one. That was pretty fucking cool. But in terms of a logistical side well, of things... Day two like, was wank, apart oh, from yeah. one series. Well, here's the thing, right? You know, I, I, I think that to come the ground, like obviously day one and two are always going to be shitters because you have to mix in the fact that Sam and OCE are part of the whole thing. The double elimination bracket means that there's a lot of slow matches because of the seeding. And I think that's kind of the seeding doing its job correctly in that mm -hmm. respect. Um, uh, uh, as for... Uh, and as for the matches, I think overall the quality was higher than last season. Uh, what wasn't higher, though, is, again, the logistical side of the RLCS because there are a lot of issues. I'm going right. to start with seating um, uh, because... Uh, uh, I don't know if you guys were watching the stream. For those of you that weren't at the event directly, you could see the big old space behind all of us on the floor. So big that we could start doing fucking aerobics in the middle of the floor. <laughs> a conga line was started by Stumpy of Subpar Button HD. A lot of fun, admittedly. We mm. started doing the fucking Macarena because that's how much space there really was. And it's like... Hold on a fucking second. Didn't these seats sell out, like, immediately as soon as the tickets went live? Like... Why? Why in the fuck did this? Why? Why do we not get more seats? Like you know, there's so much space there. You know, there's so so much fucking space there, and I, I think that they dropped the ball hardcore on this one. Oh yeah, definitely, and not just the seats as well. For me, the merch was pitiful, and the funniest oh, thing yeah. one is one fucking so one fucking t-shirt. You know. Mm -hmm. Just absolutely fucking stupid. I think it was also Which, higher priced than the last one from London. Yeah, twenty five euros. Quickly. That's fine. Um, because of course that would have been, you know, relatively in line to back then. But the thing that I found so fucking funny was the little, you know, laminated uh, plastic bits of paper up on the wall pointing merch in that way and having tons of rock league merch on it and like you know mugs t-shirts hoodies and all of that points off to a direction you just got one t-shirt splattered across it in small medium large extra large whatever have you and it's just the same thing you're like lie to me that's not exactly. over there where is the merch 
I know. And it's like, I'm just looking <laughs> look at this, it's like, mate, there's so much you could do. We've already talked about the idea of selling team merch, but as well, custom merch. Like, where are the RLCS hoodies? That I saw mm. so many people wearing a LAN, but they weren't fucking there to buy for the rest of us that don't have them. You know, I wasn't going to pay 25 euros for mm -hmm. that T-shirt because the, the selection is so fucking, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, it, we, we're so fucking small. It's Ooh. like, that was absolutely stupid. But just to go back to the seating thing for a moment here, Bacon, because I, I still okay. got a couple more things. A couple of things I want to mention, uh, Tractor, if you can bring this little tweet up that I just posted in the uh, uh, in the chat. There was some other seating issues, Woman. right? Because uh, at not floor on Twitter uh, uh, posted this little fucking uh, fun little picture, which uh, re really highlights the issues that weren't just there. It wasn't just the floor at least it's that not had the problems floor. with the seating. <laughs> it, it, well, I mean, you could you could make an argument this was a fucking floor of its own, right? This was absolutely stupid. Like forty euros for a rafter seat, and you're sitting on a literal piece of fucking wood. Like that's. <laughs> what <laughs> like come on dude that's that's something else man like I, I I'm, I'm i'm not sure why that was a thing i'm taking a look at other images around the place mm -hmm. and i don't see anybody else that had to do that essentially um th that that was dumb that was really fucking dumb. Why is that a seating option at all? I'm actually going to level some criticism at the venue for this one for providing those kind of facilities because I'm not being funny. That's fucking dumb. You know, especially with the number of seats that are available elsewhere on the fucking uh, thing. Uh, by the way, we didn't get anywhere near selling out the uh, the uh, the palace. By the way, just to let you all know, for those of you who uh, who didn't see the rafted pictures on Twitter, uh, because the uh, the stream did not show those whatsoever, and for good reason. It was the most empty land I've seen so far for Rocket League from pictures and such. Yeah. And again, that worries me a little bit, but online viewership is like, it, it remedies that worry. And it, I think, comes down to a lot of, um, again, people that are enthusiasts of Rock League went straight for those uh, ground floor seats. And the other guys that got left out just sort of thought, no, if I'm not going to be amongst the crowd, because there are a lot of people that, that want to be amongst mentality. the charting. Uh, yeah, Remember, and... I, 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 I went on Twitter saying I might not even bother because I'm going to be up in those rafters. And, uh, well, this kind of shit proved me right. Because if I got one of the mm. front row seats and it was like I'm sitting on a bench, I would have been just like, fuck this, I'm going back to the flat, mate. I'm just going to watch the fucking stream from home. Just I got booze there that's much cheaper than the venue, um, which, you know, oh, fair Oh, fuck play. me. Do you know what? That, yeah. that, again, that's another venue thing of its own, right? You know, like, you know, uh, for those of you who don't mm. know, a, uh, a, 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 a and, and, and there is also a level of fairness because I got a whiskey Coke with probably like maybe, I'm trying to find a comparison point. It's not really a good half comparison half. point. Yeah. But essentially it was like half whiskey, half Coke. So it's like fair play on that one. If you're going to give me essentially what is the equivalent of three and a half shots, uh, possibly even more uh, than, uh, and then, no, of course, you know, eight, eight euros is pretty big, but 16 euros as well with, uh, with, with a massive cup. A lot of money to spend. Um, uh, and it, it wasn't just the alcohol as well. Like, if it was just alcohol, it was overpriced, fair play. But I think someone... I can't remember who it was, but someone posted a thing on Twitter, and I can't remember what it was called. Um, uh, I can't remember, you know, uh, who, 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 who mentioned it, but it was like, in order to sustain the ideal level of hydration, you need to spend about thirty six euros in a single day at the uh, uh, at, at the World Championship because the bottles of water were so fucking overpriced, and you weren't allowed to bring your own in. Um, uh, I don't think until day two, essentially, which is when people found out that actually the staff don't really give a shit, mm -hmm. which is fucking absurd. I mean, I'm pretty sure water is like a human right or something like that um not that, something that, that costs 36 euros to keep yourself appropriately hydrated the, over the course of a day the first this was by the subpar lads as well the 36 euros was was across okay. the whole weekend because you've got to have something like two liters of water a day something along those lines so that works out 12 a day um because the waters were the 300 uh, milliliter 350 milliliter ones and they were saying two euros one of those small bottles could not refill them up because there was no water, you know, fountains, whatever around the arena, mm. which, like you said, is against European um, venue laws and all of that sort of stuff yeah, for human rights. Um, and yeah, there's a picture of the venue. That's the. Uh, yeah, I, know, I, I, I was going to wait. Uh, finish, 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 finish your point real quick and I'll, I'll talk about no. the context behind this picture. Uh, but yeah, uh, so that again goes against that and it just comes down to the venue itself. That's not on Silex really because that's not what they have to fulfill but that comes down to this is a problem that Silex maybe didn't do the research which fair enough when you see who what other events have been put there you wouldn't have thought it had been bad but yeah, it was just an amalgamation of... Uh, I, I would say a lot of problems because even then on the first day when we walked in there, Jay, everyone looked and went, 
this is going to be good shit. And then it just sort of crumbled straight away. Mm. Well, again, just, just to go back to the seating thing again, uh, something to mention about like the, uh, the, the the system. Obviously, you saw how small it was, how little space there was at the back, and how small each of the individual sections were uh, of seating. Well, this is a comparison to League of Legends' World Championship that was held at the exact same venue. Um, I can't remember mm -hmm. which one it was. Uh, based off the matches, I want to say it was... Of this uh, year. Yeah. Oh, was it of this year? Okay, then. It was only play. like a month ago. Oh, right. Okay, well, that makes it even better. But yeah, you can see, obviously, that the seating was much betterly planned. So this can't have been a venue problem. This is definitely a psionics thing, talking about how... Uh, how, how this is definitely a psionics fuck-up uh, when it comes to how they uh, set up the, the seating. And this is very easily rectified by essentially just making it better uh, for all intents and purposes. I know that seems like a really fucking like cop-out cop sort of thing, but that is literally just the way you do it. You just make sure that you have big sections of seating, and then we wouldn't have had this problem. Uh, you, you you may have even been able to, uh, to capture even more... Uh, to, uh, capture even more of the crowd chance that we had going on because I noticed that we were drowned out quite a lot by the production. That's another separate issue for another day. I'm not really interested in getting into that conversation on this particular occasion because I'm fucking exhausted. But it's like, another thing I also wanted to highlight as well is look at the rafters, I want to say, for the, uh, for, for the seating, right? Now, it's not packed, obviously. It's not full, like, you know... Um, a capacity there's still a lot of people mm -hmm. there but just for comparison's sake of you know how of, of, of how little people there were at the rocket league event i just wanted to take that image and take away about half of the people that were there and that probably gives you a rough estimation of exactly how many people uh, were at the um, don't want to uh, say it's that severe but you take the count more people down on the ground floor and yeah uh, it's that case of rocket league they didn't really they've got to work out something to get people to these land events because we we're talking them before the marketing unless you watch rlcs is pretty poor mm. and a lot of people just don't really realize it uh for a real life example i know um a mate's flatmate uh who played rocket league on his uh it was just on his switch and on his ps4 he really liked the game but didn't actually like he knew that the rlcs was a thing online because he'd seen it in game but didn't know like these things had finals at land so he just thought they were like little online tournaments he didn't realize the like the level that it was all at and that just goes to show like for casual fans they are not getting engaged with the esports aspect of it you have to yeah. actively go look into that by watching twitch and that so if you're someone that doesn't really know that whole ecosystem doesn't really know esports you're not going to get into it because it's not being pushed at you by Sionix. they could have literally put a venue advertisement on the fr on the home page of the game Awesome. Thank you, Tractor. No one's going to hear that. <laughs> just for I mean, context, so Tractor no, has actually on... like put up a, uh, a just, just posted a good point about potentially putting like arena advertisements uh, in, in the game, which I think they did do towards which the end of they it. They did do two but weeks it was beforehand. Like, yeah, but it's, it came in way too fucking late, as we mentioned. You know, like it was so it was a splash screen which you could actually skip if you knew how to do it right, or if you accidentally did it right. In the case of a lot of in, in a lot of cases, mm -hmm. like myself and and, and, and you, Bacon, um, it was around the, around the time of TCS Esports League. So um, or like the final couple of weeks of TCS Esports. League, so we didn't even get a splash screen until after we unloaded from our first game. Uh, just to let you know the the, mm -hmm. the level of, of promotion and coding we're talking about from Psionics. Another thing as well is that I think that this kind of a venue just came up way too quickly essentially you know like psionics are trying to sell out arenas before i think rocket league has hit the arena level for all intents yeah. and purposes like i remember having a conversation with stumpy and he was saying that at vegas this it was even worse because obviously it's a massive fucking um uh, uh it, it's a massive fucking uh, venue that they had at vegas and although it, it said that the tickets were sold out i'm told that the truth of the matter is is, is actually very different which you know n n n it, it, which intimates the idea that maybe psionics aren't being genuine with their ticket sales in that respect um, uh, uh, but I, I'm not sure. I don't have any 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 evidence that that's all exclusively just sort of like punditry and um, uh, uh, and all that stuff. Well, um, but in again, Europe, especially, the handling like, you know, of tickets just to stay, stay on that point, we know and we've said we've covered it before. The tickets on the Spanish tip, uh, ticket master website went live like six hours before they did on the English website, which is used over in America as well as like mm. UK and everything. There is the dot com, but the dot es had them six hours beforehand. So everyone that was a hardcore fan instantly rushed on and picked up those ground floor tickets to which everyone else that you know was at work or doing something like that didn't know went around was waiting for that official release time because it did get announced that that was going to be the time be ready for it uh, so they, of course they didn't get that information went on it so all the ground floor seats had gone and just probably went you know what 
fuck it. I don't need to go to this land. I'll go to the next one or the one after that, you know, next time it's around. And that is one of the problems with the mentality of it all is that you've got to have something a little bit more to draw people in. We even get people at the moment that are buying tickets, not going to lands purely because they want the fucking wheels. But that's not 40 euro wheels, no. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I know. I've, um, uh, uh, I, 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 I find that is even more fucking fun. Like, I'm, I, I think we're getting to a point with these sports items where it's just like, can we fucking just get rid of them now? Because like, we're inflating that a lot of the ticket sales and a lot of the, um, uh, and a lot of the other shit, um, to such a ridiculous extent. Um, uh, uh, it's to a point where I'm not even sure how many viewers are genuine. It's it, it, it's quite insane to be honest. Um, uh, uh, but but to close out the whole idea mm. uh, uh, of the venue itself, like I remember having a conversation with Stumpy, and yep. um, uh, we 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 were talking a lot about how I think if we went back to sort of like theatre style events, especially in Europe, I think we can. Um, uh, uh, I, I think. I think we could do a lot better in terms of the look and general feel of it because, like, this is an arena. I think that the general sort of, like, capacity was at, like, 5,000 people or something like that um, mm -hmm. uh, or something along those lines. And it's like, I feel like if we went back to somewhere like, you know, Brixton Academy... Uh, I think that, that was the thing me and Stumpy mentioned. Like, imagine selling out Brixton Academy, which at a seating level is about 3,800 people. I think we could do that pretty easy, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, or, or something like uh, the uh, uh, the Hammersmith Apollo, which is another really cool little venue. That um, would be awesome, actually. Yeah, yes. and the Hammersmith Apollo is actually pretty easy set up to the point where you can have analysts and casters all set up at the back. Uh, I don't know if you've ever been to that venue. I've been to it loads of different times. Mm -hmm. um, but just sort of like, just sort of, as, as, as gem general examples of how you could set it up. Um, or, you know, something like the, uh, the Indigo at the O2 Arena, uh, which is about a 2,000 seater theatre and all of these are essentially music venues but they've been used they can be used and in, in the case of the Indigo it has been used for esports in the past and I feel like if we went back to that for a lot of the European lands especially in the cases where like this we're trying to go absolutely massive when we when we probably like we, we're trying to run before we can walk essentially when it comes to European lands I'm not sure about America because I think America's got a much bigger fan base um but again, if you take a look at the way things have worked and the way things are sort of like uh, uh, transpired in respect to the ticket sales, like it, it doesn't look good. It doesn't look good to see as many people as they, as they did. And the stream in particular, trying its best to avoid shots of the rafters with the exception of the UKO fan club. Shout out to those boys. You know, oh, like yeah. it, it, it really sort of, um, uh, I, I think that we need to, I think that it's kind of like we're, we're overselling the shit a little bit much. Like imagine if they tried to open it up to the whole, arena style essentially you know like, and i think i think we may have like criticized that decision early on i think honestly that now looking back it's probably the right decision um from psionics in that respect so fair play to them but all these issues that we've talked about they combine to what left us on day one at least feeling like this was not a very prestigious world championship event bake and i think i'm pretty sure it was stumpy or cold that said something like this does not feel like a world championship and they've been to like fucking three of those things yeah, and they've gone out to the NA ones as well. Yep. And for me, this was my third EU uh, time round. And I think, honestly, the poorest one. Of course, Landon was the most hyped, but season two was so much better than this, just from an atmosphere perspective. And that was like, again, another winter one out in bloody Amsterdam, which was fucking freezing. But everyone made the trekkers great. And I mean, the off play is great and fun because you've got to meet the uh you know players and all of that everyone hanging out and that's one thing i think was really missing from this no after party for everyone yeah. it felt very odd for the first time and that it was just basically blanked uh we broke that story of course when we got the information from the insider and it was a case of everyone really not believing that this was going on because why would they change something which has gone on for eight seasons uh sorry seven seasons why on the eighth would they just drop this and again no answer for that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, in fairness for us, we set up our own after party in our flat, which uh, I'm, I'm sure there are many stories coming out of that, most of which I don't remember <laughs> for reasons of booze. I mean, you know, just forgetting shit. Uh, you know, that's definitely you what it is. to go to bed. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, all in all, I think that while the matches were great um, and the RLC and the RLCS like tournament itself was 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 all right, I think that just like this was the worst RLCS event ever. The only thing that I think saved saved the event from being a complete fucking failure was the fans. Like mm. we we have driven. I think we've driven the point home that Europe has 
a really, really cool fan base and a bunch of guys that are so ready to fucking, you know, drive the EU scene up to the top end of where it should be and at the top end where we've seen so many great talents sort of come through. Like, one of the world champions this season is a fucking European guy. The only guy to win a four, four, four world championships, you know, uh, in, you know, that's, that's half of the world championships we've ever had. I think at one point he had a majority above all the rest of the, uh, above the rest of the season, you know, like you take a look at the things that we've seen, that we've seen come out of Europe and the fans have driven it. Yeah, because he won season, season three, four and five back to back, which is the majority of all the, of all the world championships at that time. Out of um, seven. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah, no, he's, this is, he's never been able to get the majority by numbers. But anyway, keeping going on that. And I'm just going to say like with the fan base thing for Europe, I, it's a very small pocket of it because we can say that within like the crowd, there was a lot of, even on the ground floor, a lot of people that only really got involved on day three once uh, the lads like Craftman, something and Cole were getting got up and trying to actually wasted. like get everyone involved in all of that. Um, I can remember we were sitting right at the front in the middle section. And there was two lads, uh, two like local lads that just wanted to get involved. You know, must have got seats, were really enthusiastic, but didn't get involved in chanting or clapping, anything like that at all. They can do whatever they want, but I'm just saying, like, you it's not just in the EU is better, everyone gets involved in the chance thing, like what it always comes down to. It is just that select EU community of the hardcore rocket I... fans which really get involved. Well, that's the thing. It's like, you know, we, we thought we were the only ones in Section C at one point, but then the Yukio guys cropped up, and then there was Vitality mm -hmm. fans that are also back in the back of the, uh, at the, back of the venue, and they sort of had a... Uh, um, um, and, and they had their own involvement. And it's like, again, the, the, the fans really showed what, what, what Europe could do, and yes, it mm -hmm. was a small little pocket of the European community, but it's like, towards the end there, you saw everyone rushing up, because after that whole weekend, people were really invested in that whole thing. Yeah. Um, uh, and you're never going to be able to outweigh the casual fans with the hard fans at all but it's like when it comes to the fans the quality themselves i think that europe has the better fans like you know the number of creative chance we had the excitement that we had for even the shit matches this world championship like compare that to north america where it's like you know they only ever cheer for the american teams and they go silent as soon as they're all fucking out you know like you know i, I feel like that, that, that europe have proven that there is a serious demand for european tournaments there's a serious demand for european land events Mm -hmm. And again, this World Championship was saved by the responses from the fans themselves. So you know, credit to Subpar, Crafters, all those guys who drove the chants and the activity and the oh, fans was, this weekend. I'm going to say largely Crafters this weekend. That yeah, lad was Crafters, Crafters was going. fucking standing center of the floor trying to get everyone to clap, and he did a really fucking good job. Again, all of us, everyone who was there, fucking, you, 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 you've done the EU scene proud, mm -hmm. I want to say. Um, and uh, and I, I feel like that that's the best way to sort of end off the logistical talk of it all, unless you have something yeah, else you want to say. I was just going to say, and now for next land, we look towards Kavitsa because that will be where the closed um, qualifiers will be for the Olympics. So it'll be an that interesting assuming, one there. That, that, that is assuming it's even on a stage at that point, which I, I don't really know. There's a good chance True. they could do it from the ESL Poland studio, which feels like... Um, uh, which feels like a good, a, a good sort of, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a good likelihood, I want to say. So, yeah. anyways, there you go. That's the logistical talk and the political talk of the RSCS World Championship. Let's talk about some results now, Bacon, because there was a Ooh, lot yeah, of fun boy. shit going on. So, um, uh, let's talk about the group stages. Obviously, um, uh, we. We, we, I think for Group A, it was pretty predictable for the most part where things were going to go. Uh, we saw NRG and Vitality coming out of those winners' finals, and um, uh, uh, we got Veloce coming out of the losers' finals uh, from that particular group stage. Renegades, Low Key, E United, those guys went out of that particular group. Mm hmm. Um, uh, and in Group B, this is where things got really upsetting for a lot of different teams and players, in particular the Reciprocity guys who lost the Space Station and then they lost the Pittsburgh Knights, only taking a single game in those two. Uh, yeah, only taking a single game in those two series, not counting three sins because three sins at the end of the day were arguably the worst team in, in show at the World Championship. Um, uh, but that was our favourites there, Bacon, and they went out in, as, in I, opposed I, to them. No, I would say Canberra was worse than three sins. OC got the worst team. Yeah. Three Sins was better than Canberra. Uh, we'll, 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 we'll talk more in detail about that later. But for Group B, Dignitas, Space Station, and Pittsburgh Knights came out on top and managed to beat, as you mentioned, Canberra, Havoc, Three Sins, and Reciprocity all in the lower bracket, leaving our final playoffs as Space Station, Veloce, Runner Vitality, Pittsburgh, Dignitas, and NRG, with Veloce going out to Space Station in pretty quiet fashion in those round of six. Runner Vitality beating Pittsburgh Knights in a 4 2 series, NRG swamping their way through to the grand finals, and Runner Vitality barely scraping 
sweeping a series against Dignitas mm. and then barely losing to NRG in those grand finals, leaving your final world championship team, cha championship winning team, excuse me, as NRG Esports for the first time in RLCS history. I have to say that I'm... I'm, I'm a little bit gutted, but I'm not too much gutted out of that one. But we'll talk about NLG as the world champions later yeah. on down the road. For now, I do want to talk about the smaller regions first. Because we did mention on the podcast last week when we did it live from Madrid that we uh, we were looking a lot of the smaller regions and seeing who needs to have this needs to, who needs to have a good showing uh, in, in in this one. Some people lean towards OCE, other people lean towards South America. But uh, now that dust has settled, I have to say that this was probably the worst showing from OCE that we've ever had at a World Championship. It was actually fucking dreadful. Yeah, it was pretty, uh, well, dog shite, to be honest. Renegades in that first series. Uh, as you know, we'll go, we'll talk about uh, Canberra Havoc first because that was the second game shown on the stream. That 3 0 against Space Station Gaming was oh, just horrible to watch. That was not pretty in the slightest. Canberra Havoc, everyone was claiming coming into this that they only got the spot above the Chiefs, and that was because the Chiefs just threw. And looking at that series, yeah, you would believe that. And mm -hmm. again, watching back, yep, that's pretty much happened. And don't get me wrong, Space Station Game, we're having a blinder of a weekend. We cannot dismiss that at all but it just shows they couldn't get anything going they finally go up against pittsburgh knights who just seem to like just take it as a warm-up game not even really caring against them on day two camera havoc they were coming into it we knew this was going to be a double o and out but we thought you know against space station game maybe they can get one game at least they're not we're not going back to the old ways of oc where they can't even take a game off the other regions and Unfortunately, it didn't go like that. Uh, it was still the point, weren't it? It was Spy Doge didn't even get a goal over the no. weekend. Don't get me wrong, it's only two series, but that's still harsh. That not able to get one goal in six games. I mean, we're taking a look at the group B of uh, bracket matches from day two, and we were just like, do you know what? Do you want to just skip the first two series is because these are going to be whitewashes? Canberra, ha Can Canberra Havoc are going to do sweet fuck all in this one. And as you mentioned, they didn't do sweet fuck all at all. Mm -hmm. They scored no games. Uh, they scored a total of five, six, seven, eight goals in both of their series, which is just... Ugh. Ugh. Oh my god, Canberra, Canberra Havoc just did not have a great showing at all. Um, and Renegades themselves also did pretty fucking shit. Um, uh, they lost to EU United pretty fucking bad, um, which uh, I guess you could be expected because it is a United at the end of the day. They did manage to mm -hmm. go quite far in respect of that, uh, in respect of that uh, first group. Um, and then they had a narrow i mean a narrow series against loki esports to the point where loki were on and match that point low, first loki were doing shit in that match as well yeah like loki did not turn lo up to day yeah. two Loki were doing shit on day two and Renegade still nearly lost to them. Still nearly fucking lost to them. And then what do they do? They go on to Veloce. They try and see if they can take him on. They get that first game. Then they get shut down for games two and three. Game four had the nine minute overtime and they scored an own goal. <laughs> they double committed in the stupidest double commit you're ever going to fucking see. Renegades completely shit the bed. This was the worst top OCE team we've ever seen at the World Championship from that fucking play alone. That play alone secures the idea that OCE were just the worst region to come around. And it proves what we were saying as well. You know, mm. uh, we, we, we were talking a lot about how, um, uh, 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 about how it's like, you know, we're seeing a situation now where like, the South America sides are showing their potential above OCE and OCE are slipping behind the curb because it feels that they've gotten complacent. We have no reason to get complacent. You are now literally the worst region that we have at Worlds based off of these results. Yeah, and again, that comes down to a problem like that's been lingering around the scene of OCS. Very few chances to get out. Uh, they got out to quite a few of the dream hacks and performed better than what they did here. But again, that complacency is a little bit of an issue because OCS always had two top teams and it's always been evident. But here, you know, when we had the Chiefs and that in the past being able to actually go distance, I think their best result was a fourth at land season i'm going to say six um and yeah them dropping here it just feels bad next season i hope they can like you know fix that renegade side because sicky was not having a good weekend uh a la own yeeting yeeting himself out of his own net to get an own goal <laughs> um so something needs to be corrected there but yeah not pretty and we we can't see anything else like veloce 
were shite all weekend long and they just scraped it. It was just the problem, like, that United didn't show up in day two. They had a good day one. And Loki, again, did not show up in day two. Had a fantastic day one. You look at... Um, I'm sorry, we're sort of like jumping on to Sam here as well, Jay. But you look at Low Kitty and their performance against NRG. We have to say that was a close yeah. R series. I mean, um, I mean, I was going to segue to that anyway because, like, as you mentioned, like, even though it was a 3 0, all the matches, with the exception of game three, came within a single goal. There were points where I genuinely thought, holy shit, Low Kitty could actually do this. And I, I feel like in that respect as well as beating Veloce in that first round mm -hmm. as well. Like low key, even though the, even though the official results will say that they're pl they placed lower than Renegades, I feel like they still did better than Renegades just because of you know the, the lower bracket system. If there was any other lower bracket mm -hmm. double elimination system that you know sort of like weighted that victory for low key against Veloce fairly, then we'd be we, we'd be in the situation where like you know low key would rank higher than the Renegades in my opinion, and uh, th that seems. Um, and, 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 and that to me seems like the most accurate way to sort of weigh it up because like, you know, that's, that's, low, that's low key right there. You know, they, they have proven themselves to be a really legitimate force. I think that they can have some serious dark horse and upset potential going forward yep. into the next season. I really hope they stick together because I know that in some of these smaller regions, roster stability can be a real problem, but I hope that these guys stick together, they uh, stay yeah, together. Just in the and try and smallest regions, roster stability is a problem, Jay. <laughs> right, more so than it is an issue for EU and NA, okay, right? Obviously, there's still an yeah. issue for all of them because it's fucking Rocket League. Uh, but, you know, again, I, I'm hoping that low key stay together in that respect to try and work on that uh, because again I, I, I think that you, you take a look at the two regions and they're completely polar opposites from each other South America did mm. great OCE did absolute wank they did absolute wank and they are now for, in my opinion the worst region in Rocket League which is uh, quite a fun thing to be saying considering just a few seasons ago Chiefs were top four in the whole competition and now I mean actually I guess we can sort of talk about that in, in theory as well then do we think the Chiefs could have been able to uh, uh, could have been able to pull one out of that if they were able to pull one out of the hat and go through to this land event? Do you think they could have potentially done better than Renegades? I I don't know. I think they would have done better than Canberra Havoc, no doubt. I could have seen them taking down Space Station Gaming, uh, losing against Reciprocity probably, but who knows? Reciprocity from this weekend, they could have done it, and we could have had a team, you know, secured into an OCE team secured in day three. So, yes, I think the problem largely for Canberra Havoc was they were a team that just did great on the day compared to a throw-in Chiefs um, back mm. in the OC like uh, regionals. And coming into this, they did not have the experience. They looked scared up on that stage. And I can't blame them. They went up against two fairly strong, very skilled opponents. You know, Pittsburgh Knights just coming off the back of winning DreamHack Montreal. They're a scary opponents uh, to go up against. And Space Station Gaming have been around for ages within, you know, seeing... Knocking off uh, some strong opponents like, you know, um, what was it, Cloud9 and G2 previously. So the Space Station and Pittsburgh were always going to win those two games. But like we said, we would have thought Canberra could have taken a game or two off of each to just try and soften the blow. But they were not able to get anything going and they were their own worst enemies. What with the double commits and everything going on, they were just frightened little kids. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's still a lot of consistency issues to work on in the Sam region. Um, uh, you know, I think that the, the, the well, I was speaking to Banana Man after Three Sins sort of like went out, and he was saying how on the comms, the uh, the 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 Three Sins guys were just sort of like really panicky because they were on the big mm. stage for the first time, which is fair enough, I think. You know, like at the end of the day, it's going to be a tough little one to sort of like, uh, to, to, it's going to be tough to sort of swallow when you're on the World Championship stage for the first time. I imagine a lot of people went through that who are currently really fucking. You know, legit talents. Well, they're the two to look at in comparison, really, because they're both in the same boats, aren't they? You know, first uh, big, big land. And Free Sins had a much better time of it. They were much more convincing against both Dignitas and Reciprocity, who I'm going to say now are harder opponents than uh, bloody uh, Space Station Gaming and Pittsburgh Knights. Hmm. Interesting. I wouldn't have said they were convincing against Dignitas. Like there were a lot of fucking issues that left them over there. I think they were just trying to play carefully, which um, uh, which is what gave them that sort of like uh, that, that that thing. But um, uh, I'm pretty sure that Khan they were and convincing Kanda have been... in game three when they finally fixed their problems. Unfortunately, it was just too late. 
I'm pretty sure Carr and uh, uh, Card and Tanda were, were part of the last season of uh, of the World Championship as well. By the way, so um, it's not no, like yeah, um, you know, it's not like three. It's not like you know, both teams had a uh, had no experience there. Like Loki certainly have a couple of decent shouts in that one. Mm -hmm. So yeah, again, I think again, all, all in all, South America, great OCE, fucking shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's all we can say about that one. I think we've banged on about that for long enough. Uh, I did want to talk about the EU versus NA rivalry, though. We always do that on this show because we're oh, just yes. peddling. We're just peddling the same old arguments from a year and a half ago. <laughs> so I'm, um, uh, you know, like, that, that's how we roll here. We, on our we can't last afford shop. to update the scripts. We're not making. Yeah, money exactly. Yeah, the it's just no, there's no budget here. Trox, buy us out, bro. Um, but uh, yeah, obviously, four teams from EU, four teams from NA. Um, uh, those guys. Uh, all, all in all, we had a pretty even standing actually from the group stage because we had uh, uh, three teams from each region make it into the top six two teams that were to the semis and uh, an eu versus na final essentially uh so we had a uh, um so we so essentially we essentially had like the mirror bracket it was very similar to uh dreamhack open leipzig where we had like the, the eu side and the na side of the semi-finals so obviously it wasn't there, it wasn't like that front the, the, entire the format bracket is right. sort of stacked to be like this as an fyi yeah. that's just how it is and you can understand it of course so you've got to do seedings from both regions going into it but yeah, like the, this made a good little storyline going into it. Yeah, a lot of good storylines actually from that uh, bracket, and obviously you mentioned as uh, as we talked about some of the teams that actually made uh, that then they made it in. Um, I wanna I wanna ask that real quick. Who do we? Which region do we think won out of the Titans essentially? EU or NA? Uh, I'm gonna say EU in the long shot, but that's because we had a better performance as a whole, I would say. That can be, mm. like, because Space Station had a very easy series against Veloce. I'm going to say that right now. Um, Veloce were looking pretty poor, but were able to just somehow scrape by each and every time. Up against NRG, Space Station just instantly crumbled, though. But you look at Dignitas and Renault Vitality, those are two great stories. And I think you've yeah. only got one good story coming from NA and NRG. Um, and that's how I'm going to weigh up. Dignitas somehow getting stronger with every single series at the start of the season, let's say uh, week four of league play, you thought this is a team that was done this season. They're, they're, they're struggling to just keep up from the relegation zone and they somehow go into regionals do fucking fantastic in the regionals get their spot in land and then and each day you're there going holy shit coming into day three everyone was there going dig have made top four secured and they could take this you know everyone was believing in it and it would have been a yeah. crazy run especially since it was astral's first season playing you know in the rlcs whereas vitality Everyone knew Vitality don't show up until day three, and how close were they against NRG in day two in that game? So it was all about stories, and then of course you had the old um, Gale Force slash Original Dig Dynasty trio in oh, Turbo yeah. there was, Panda there was, and there was that thing against like, you know, each other. Regardless yeah. what happens, we're going to have a four-time world champion in those grand finals, which was fucking really cool mm -hmm. um, uh, between either Kdop or Turbo. And I think that would have sealed the deal of who's the greatest player uh, 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 of, in Rocket League right now. Um, uh, or, or you know, at least at least for this technically season. still of all time as well I'd yeah say. technically still of all time you know i mean it's, it's it's an ever shifting little debate and i think honestly we could do that as like a, 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 a as a back and forth sort of argument and a uh, and a feature on the show uh, at some final point final shock hello potentially final <laughs> shock actually yeah, that's a good shout that's not even a bad idea so i uh, keep your eyes locked to the twitters at uh, rl after shock and on twitch.tv slash rl after shock where you'll be able to bring you that information and that debate when if and when it happens next week um uh, again i have no idea because we are so fucking close to christmas um but yeah i'm gonna actually go lean on the side of eu as well not just because i'm a fanboy just because as well you take a look at the placements from the group stage and you've got united who was the north american team that went out in the groups and they placed in the lower semi-finals reciprocity was the eu team that went into the uh, that went out of the group stage they placed in the losers final so one place ahead of those guys plus the fact that nrg are 130 eu and therefore i'd say that you know what that's a uh, th th that's an eu victory for this only round again. just though because realistically just, no. I, I will say right there now is this one was no one of the dividing closest ones. skill between eu and NA. eu I'm mvp yeah. absolutely um uh, I, i'll agree on that front as a track to mention eu mvp so uh, there you go even more even more reason to agree NA with team EU. so that pretty much does the 50 50. <laughs> <laughs> So, I mentioned them a moment ago. Reciprocity had a very disappointing little LAN event this time around. A lot of us went into this one thinking to ourselves, this is going to be an NRG Reciprocity final. We thought mm -hmm. to ourselves, they are the best teams from either region, but Reciprocity shit the bed on day one, and they couldn't get it done in the final match of that group stage against the, uh, Pits the Peepsburg Knights. Um, uh, uh, so, yeah. 
not not a good look for the boys, Bacon. And you look, but just another look on your face. Yeah, was you there even a point that... of them turning up the weekend? Like, <laughs> Jesus Christ, lads! Like, we thought we had fixed this problem with Valencia, didn't we? Where they had finally, finally been able to do it. Finally, fix that land curse. They come to RLCS. Yes, everyone's there, rubbing their hands together, going, "Oh my God, NRG! We thought they had it easy, but reciprocity have kept this fucking hot streak going. What with the online and that." And like you got to think, coming off regionals, four zero against Vitality, everyone's there like reciprocity. They've got this. They are our strongest team. They come to day one, and I'm I'm not even going to say shit the bed because they didn't even get into bed. You know, they just instantly fucked it up against Space Station Gaming. They looked absolutely scared on the pitch, and I can go into a lot more analysis than that, and it just how the team just did not function together in either of their plans. Because I've always said it in the past, they've got a plan A and a plan B, depending on how the team rotates and how it all works. They weren't doing any of that. Everyone just was not getting in place, so they fucked it. Going up against Free Sins easy win because it's free sins the players can be fuck ups and win that one because they're just much more mechanically skilled players but it was so evident against uh, the Pittsburgh Knights and just how they struggled through that and Pittsburgh Knights were struggling as well it was not any, they were having a throw weekend as well realistically but yikes I the lads are going to have to go away go to draw on board I don't want them to split up like a lot of people are there going oh is it time for them to make a transfer is it time for a change no they just need to be thrown into a gamer house and live there for the rest of their life I've said before chain them to the tables because they need to get that sort of experience up on stage on computers together because it is yeah. just so bad at the moment that they can I be mean that flip flop on land and here it was just all flop it looked a lot like PSG from when we used to see them. You remember? Yeah. Like back in the day, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, they're great online. They're fantastic. They they, they can win the Coliseum, no fucking problems. Go to land, and you get shit on in the group stage. You know, that that that's what that's what the PSG curse was like, and it's back for the reciprocity side. And I think there's a number of issues with it. As you mentioned, they, the plans did not go right. They couldn't, you know, play as a team, essentially. And sure, Sepp has gone from being, you know, one of the best players in the world. The beast. Yeah, the, 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 the fucking, you know, the, the, the jet. You know, he's gone from being the dude. That the, was fair. The best. Being the jumbo jet. Uh, fucking, you know, uh, the bottom line is that Shaw Set was like easily the best player on that squad um, uh, around Valencia and during the summit. But in this event, he was silent. He was very, very quiet. Um, uh, and reciprocity, I think, suffered as a result for it. They needed him to step up when it mattered. And then when it mattered, he was, he just couldn't do it, you know. And it led to the situation where, as you say, against Space Station, they looked scared. Against Pittsburgh Knights, they didn't take a single game. Uh, the only one that they were able to win was against Three Sins. And even that looked relatively close. But, mm -hmm. you know, like reciprocity really dropped the ball on this land. And it concerns me for the future of this team because this was theirs to win. I will add as a caveat, though... I know from talking to various people that um, uh, 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 as, as an extra little sort of like extension to what we were saying earlier uh, about the logistical side of the land event, um, uh, there were a lot of problems with the player side as well. Like there wasn't enough time to practice and get warmed up, for example, is what I'm being yeah. told on day one and two. Um, uh, as well as that, coaches didn't have headsets till day two, which is the thing I, I fucking I completely forgot that we missed actually, which yep. was extremely dumb. Uh, it wasn't in place until day two, uh, which is uh, incredibly fucking... Um, incredibly fucking stupid and there's all these reasons that kind of left them looking extremely fucking you know down and out again i talked to a couple of the guys from there and they were just like i think i think they could have done a little bit better if they had the chance to warm up because a lot of these issues seem like they were going to been they, they would have been mitigated by the appropriate amount of practice time and warm-up time which apparently they weren't given essentially yeah, it, it was just so many problems coming into this weekend. That player had uh, the coach headset thing. I still can't believe was a problem. And even Again, then, logistically, logistically, this was the worst RLCS yeah. ever. <laughs> just purely um, because by the end of it as well, it had to be like a headset that was clearly plugged into one of the guys' PCs as well. They had it on then during like the game, and they took it off and had to go stand behind because otherwise they could only really see one player's uh, you know headsets. Uh, so yeah, reciprocity. I feel bad because you got to think this was like an awesome play bringing Yummy in pretty much just for Worlds. And yeah. he just, I, I don't know. He was saying he was struggling to, you know, get any sort of information, especially on day one, because the players couldn't really hear over the sound there. And yeah, day two, there's not much time because naturally trying to fix things on the fly with that one minute break in between games. <laughs> yeah. Like, 
reciprocity just needs to go I wouldn't say entirely back to drawing board, but get their plans out and then just actually go through scenario after scenario after scenario, try and get some more land experience because you got to think this is, they've got their chance for a solid bet for a French team coming into the Olympics yeah. and they could do massive stuff because it is going to be them versus uh, Loche essentially trying to vie for the strongest French team there because I doubt that both, like, both teams will want to be the head lads sort of for their nations, you know? Yeah. A lot of people were um, using the um, card that Short Set had for Valencia. Oh, oh that's a that's no no that's a good point as well. That track is just pointing out in the background. It was Short Set as well that had like um put the Fennec to the forefront, you know? And he was the one that started the whole Fennec hype of how it's such a good car. And this weekend he wasn't driving the Fennec. Maybe that's the problem, Jay. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not a big fan. I'm not, I don't think I believe in those superstitious shit. To be honest, like you know, at the end of the but day, players it's all mechanical. do. That's the difference. Yeah. Well, well, players do. In that case, that's your own fucking fault. And apparently, as is the headset thing. I know the trucks made a mention of that. You know that that, that everyone had no headsets, and that is true. But it's still a factor that contributes to I think reciprocity's downfall and arguably the downfall of several other teams uh, in 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 this thing. It's, it's something that should have been fixed. And again, if you combine that with the fact that they had no prep time, no setup time, mm. no warm up time, and then the fact that they couldn't try and change it about the fact that they couldn't switch things up um, uh, in the middle of the series because they didn't, well, they weren't able to communicate effectively. I think that all these things combined for reciprocity, yes, it's not an excuse on its own, but supported by the other factors that we mentioned as well. I think it's a fair assessment to make yeah. uh, for uh, for reciprocity. Yeah. As well as that, Trox has also put in a uh, a, uh, a little status from DeSoto, a, um, uh, a tweet essentially report that Splice are going to shut down, which is fair enough, uh, cool, whatever. I mean, Splice are no longer in Rocket League, so I don't really think it's a relevant thing, um, unless you want to talk about it or... I mean, nah, it's not really nah. relevant right, cool. to this. Then let's move but on. This and... is um, off the bat, just so people don't go sort of like balls to the wall. That uh, me and Dex were talking about it. Um, they've just picked up the Mad Lions brand, which uh, is another esports org, and it's looking almost like Splice is just going to stop its name and rebrand itself to Mad Lions. That's pretty much what's happened. Who knows? Splice could somehow become a little bit more like a, what Icon did over in OCE, if you guys will remember that, of yeah. how they become more of like an overarching figure and just use that for a trading name that owns multiple little smaller companies. Uh, like what the Immortals brand sort of has become, hasn't it, within uh, other esports, Jay? Or, uh, or because, Australis teams as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, because extent. you've got to look at Splice owns a Cod World League, uh, team and a uh, Overwatch League team, so the splice name isn't being shown there. So they're rather, I reckon, it is just that smart choice of becoming an overarching company, which is fucking stupid, teams. by the way. For anyone who thinks those franchise ideas are a great idea, like right, no. franchise is a different idea, Jay. No, 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 right no, no. now, I mean, I'm just I mean, saying. I mean, I mean, the concept <laughs> of creating a franchise brand exclusively for the sake of the uh, for, for the sake of that league, like it's a fucking dumb idea. You're destroying esports history because now it doesn't become financially <laughs> viable to keep the brands like Splice around. And the same thing could also have to cl happen to Cloud9 based on the fucking direction that they're going down with their rosters. So, you know, just oh, saying. Boy. Anyways, that's my tangent over. Let's talk about fucking reciprocity, uh, not reciprocity, Veloce. Mm -hmm. uh, because I think that considering where they were at the start of the season, this is an all right run. But I will admit that I'm also pretty badly tainted. Uh, I'm, I, I'm, I'm looking at this through rose tinted glasses mm. because I kept getting given, Hannah kept giving, uh, Paint Me Pastel kept giving me those fucking um, uh, freaky um, uh, little cutout heads. And I'm just having so much fun with that. So, like, I don't think Which I'm in a qualified every other org, position. If any of them are yeah, listening, no. do that. Yeah. Give your fans shit the peeps uh i say the peeps pittsburgh knights did it with little uh paddles essentially make sure that you're giving out to your fans that sort of merch shit because no, yeah no absolutely they will because use in the like, crowd that gets caught and it's hype but uh, yeah and absolutely like again i don't think i'm in a qualified position to speak on this because i didn't really have many points to talk about for veloce because i was too busy just playing with those fucking things mm -hmm. so I'm, uh, I'm i'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna back out of this little section of the conversation have you talk about what you thought about veloce because again my final thoughts are that i think that they were all right i didn't think that they had a major uh that, that they that they that i think that they finished in above the respective position that they should have finished you know yep i completely agree with that that spot Right there, it should have been an all NA side. E United should have been in Veloce's spot for uh, that round of six, I reckon, because they were a better team over the weekend. Um, they just couldn't squeak it out because, again, day two, they sort of had bad um, time. Day one, they're playing fantastic for themselves. And I reckon if they just somehow beat Veloce, because that was a shit game as well, realistically. Um, I don't know how... 
United through for the reverse uh, sweep coming out from Veloce. But realistically, that I I would say they're the better team over the weekend. Yeah. Veloce here, they were lucky, and they we know they had the easier side of the brackets because this was those four teams were always going to be a four teams down there in the losers bracket. United, Veloce, Loki, and Renegades. If you told me before this uh, weekend. Uh, who would be the team coming out of low, the lower brackets? Just go look at the uh, bloody uh, predictions and that, and you can see I picked Veloce to come out in that spot. I always thought these would be the three teams in that order as well of how it would come out. And coming into this weekend, after that day one especially, I would not have thought that. And Veloce, I don't want to say they got lucky, but they had just scraped it by they need to fix their problems because coming into this weekend you can look at my predictions i thought veloce were going to make it to the semi-finals uh i thought they would be going up against dig in that lower game and i thought veloce would take it just because of what had happened you know before in league play in regionals i thought veloce were a better looking team and i did not think dig would have the run they would have well, but it's just shown that veloce they've got to fix their land environment problems as well. They've got a little bit yeah. of a reciprocity problem, but they had the easier bracket. And just realistically, re reciprocity, Pittsburgh Knights are a hard team to go up against. Veloce had a much easier bracket to run with and it only just scraped through to top six. That's good for the brand for Veloce as an org because they're absolutely loving the Rock League team at the moment. And I know yeah. that a couple of other more like... um realistic sports uh based stuff so like the guys that are more into like fifa and that and now having a look at rocket league and are interested in that because of the success story that veloce is um just from you know an enthusiast um, enthusiast standpoint where i know the team in and out this was a poor performance yeah. from them this weekend but they got the expected finishing result of them so well, I was going to say, it's like you know, it, it, to me, a lot, of the, a, a lot of the a lot of the sentiment in 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 the arena was that hey, they they managed to place in the place that they should have done, but they got extremely lucky doing so. Like they had to go, they had to dodge so many mm. bullets. Mouse Sports had to lose twice for them to go to Worlds. Then they had to reverse sweep against EU United Trust and then choke. Then they had to rely on the fact that Renegades scored a fucking own goal in order to try and recover what was essentially a very shit game for. I won't, that, that's something that hasn't been tinted by the way. That overtime was the single most boring overtime uh, in, in in Rocket League history. It's a long one, yep. but. Um, uh, you compare that to the fucking Vitality Dignitas five minute one from game six of their uh, 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 of their semi final match, and it's like it, the, the comparison is that there's, there's none. It's night and day, essentially. Overtimes don't live up to the hype. Most of the time, they're wank. Yeah. Um, you get the very few that are fantastic. Let's just take a look at every single fucking one that Vitality were involved with this whole weekend. <laughs> they're all fantastic. But that's because Vitality have somehow got good. NRG like five fucking times. Dignitas like mm -hmm. twice. Something stupid like that. They were I, I want to say this was, uh, uh, if we're correct as well, some stats of the most time spent in overtime at an RLCS LAN. So that's quite cool. It will start to include as well. But apart from the vitality games against nrg and dig um whenever they faced off against them the overtimes were pretty crap across the entire weekend and that's purely because most teams then play safe don't they and it all comes down to a mistake for a goal thus it's not a good overtime because you don't want an anticlimactic finish that's just yeah. how it is you know yeah, we'll move on from Veloce then. I think we've sort of banged on about that. I think in all, all in all, we can just summarize mm -hmm. things as yes, they're still pretty legit. They just need to focus on those fucking. And now we get know, to the good issues. teams. We get to the good teams. Yay. Yes, Dignitas. We Ooh. well. You, you, I think, had them in a much higher regard than the rest of us, honestly. Like, I didn't think that that one playoffs result was enough to say, okay, this team is going to be fucking legit. I didn't think they would make it so far as the semis. I thought that they would go out in the group stage, if I recall correctly, and I can't, I haven't really looked at the mm -hmm. prediction sheet since that point. Um, uh, but they did all right. They did all right. They didn't do too fucking bad. You know, they uh, they had the three the three zero against three sins. A very close series against the Pittsburgh Knights, and then they swept Space Station in. I don't want to say a dominant series, but game three in particular was a five one. So there's also that to take into account. And then of course they lost to Rena Vitality, and they were probably about you know a game away from going to the grand finals, which was fucking mm. the most baller run out of any team I want to say in this World Championship. Yeah. 
So, like, a little hint as well to the uh, predictions game. I can remember after day one, me and you, or, well, you, sorting out the results, me sitting on the opposite side, like, really antsy because I had known I'd done good in predictions on day one. And then you doing it, I'm there like, oh, fuck, yeah, let's have a look at, like, day two and three. Like, how how am I going to do? And I looked towards day three, and I picked Veloce to beat Dignitas. And I can remember shouting out there, like, why the fuck? Fuck! Did I pick Volace to be Dick? <laughs> Luckily, it didn't matter. My re- like, it's not too bad. Um, I don't know the end results. Jay has not actually told me the final results here, so no. I'm, I, I know I've won, but I don't really know I've won. Um, so, but it was just there. Like you could tell before that weekend, before anything had happened. No one thought Dig was going to do it. I was the best sort of backer for Dig, and I thought it would be a top six finish. So you can get that from there. Dig had somehow ramped it up. So for them to get to the semifinals, I think is a justified finish. That game against Renault Vitality, I, I, I'll get people shouting at me. I sort of think that was the best game, and I still quote it as the best game of the entire tournament. Don't get me wrong. Grand finals against NRG for Vitality is hype. It's the grand finals. Of course, it's fucking hype. But I still think mechanically, technically speaking, that game, Dig versus Vitality, was the best one of the entire tournament. And I cannot wait until next season because I'm hoping this is every single problem now fixed. Vitality, yeah. of course, during league play looked pretty good got awful dig hadn't really got anything started up until regionals so now i'm hoping is this finally the resurgence of dig and it all came down to you kyo j you yeah. this weekend well, that's the had thing. fixed that's the thing. every it's fucking like... problem he had that's the thing. It was like we were taking a look at this whole thing, and it was like I remember you saying before we went to Walls, like in in our uh, I, don't, I don't know if it was the the last episode, or the episode before that, but you said mm-hmm. the factor that's going to make or break them is Yukio. Is yeah. going to be Yukio, 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 and even though Violent Panda wasn't performing on the same sort of level as his teammates, Yukio and Astral went a whole other step up. I'd say that Yukio probably went up two steps, which yep. is finally, finally showing up what he could do back when the you know the the second phase of Dignitas sort of came in. I remember Yukio was brought in. Sorry. Sorry, uh, sorry. Yep. It, it sort of describes how Yukio was like when he was brought in on the flip side side, you know, when it was like initially very tentative, couldn't quite work around him. Then he found his confidence. They found a way to fit him into the lineup appropriately. Then they started smashing it out. Mm-hmm. And now here on Dignitas, been a very sort of similar thing. Uh, the question is, is, is he going uh, to get picked up by another team again and start having to go through that whole fucking cycle all over again? Uh, because it took a very long time for him to get into a position where he was actually looking like a legit talent. And now that he's here on, um, uh, 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 on, on the Dignitas side, like, you know, um, he, he, he outshone everyone, in my opinion. I'm, I'm looking at it now, and I, I sort of agree uh, with Tice, uh, Dice there in chat. Mind Panda did pop off as well. He was a good power on day one because on day what one, I mean that, Astral was wank. Let, let, it, let me it, clarify. The the thing we will say is that Yuko all weekend long was great. And yeah. that is the first time we've seen it from him. One thing I will clarify is that comparing. What are you eating? A Malteser. Drepsil. Oh, Malteser. I was doing a Malteser. So, okay, okay, I was boys. We're no be longer going longer. to be streaming on the Rockley. We're going to be on the uh, Just Eating. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's Just Sham. What is it? Uh, Eating with Stream? I don't know what that Twitch Personally, fucking no, no, weird fetish Jesus. category in is. Anyway. When, when, I, when I say that Violent Panda didn't perform well, I mean, like, in comparison to his teammates, yes, there was a point where he would usurp Astral, but I think overall... You compare them to where you compare them throughout the whole little line, and on average, I think UK and Astral did wonders for that lineup. They did UK should have been the real MVP of the entire weekend, I reckon. Yeah. Um, I okay. So I've always had a problem with tournaments. Of uh, the MVP is always from the winning team. It's it's always the thing with tournaments. I think that's a load of bullshit. And yep. it should be just no matter what the most valuable player for any team. Generally, for me, that then means it's probably going to be a player that's in the top four teams because they're the ones that made it far. So they're probably going to have the most impactful or valuable players. And for me, that goes to Yukio this weekend because he single-handedly is what resurged Dignitas yeah. to the top. And like we are saying, day one, Astral was really struggling, but both Yukio and Panda were able to do it. Day two, Panda was okay but Astral but really started popped of, off. Yeah. And then day three, we were finally there, the whole team in unison. 
was just so close to taking down Vitals, who were nuts. Uh, but you know what I mean. It's that case of Yuka yeah. across the whole weekend. I don't know if it's just purely because in that arena we had an Austrian flag with his face just fucking slapped right in the middle of it. If so, we have pro strats for next season. Guys, get your uh, Turbo Pulsar flags out We're on the Swedish uh, flag. Just How do you do that? Like there. stick his it's face on the, little, on the little intersection of the cross or like... So the Swedish flag is like a cross, uh, but it's like off center. You know, yellow with uh, the blue in the background. You just get multiple turbo faces for each area. <laughs> the four seasons of turbo. That's what we're going to cover. Oh my um, god! If you get a picture yeah. from season three, four, five, and eight, yes, of his face. the four, it works. Make conspiracy theory Tim Floor hat time. It's all coming together. And then when he wins fifth in season nine. You put that in the middle of the cross <laughs> and you do it there in front of the stage. Everyone watching, slap that in the middle, reign that supreme above. Well, I mean, I've I'm sorry tingles. I'm sorry to burst your bubble bacon, but the next land's in North America, so there's no fucking chance of that ever happening. So there you go. Um, but yeah, so this is, it's, a good, it's a good little way to transition into our, the, the second to last thing we wanted to talk about, Vitality. Um, so many close matches from these guys. I have to say, when it came to the, the sheer level of Rocket League on show, like their matches were the ones that showed the most of it. NRG, three games, three overtimes in those winners' finals mm -hmm. of, of Group A. Dignitas, seven games, two overtimes, totaling about like, you know, all, all, almost five and a half minutes, of which I think we had one of the best overtimes in all of the World Championship, essentially. Um, and then, of course, those grand final performances, which was the most tense shit since Landon, by the way. Like, the, I, I, I seriously got some real fucking, you know, some, some real big you know, season five vibes okay, from that. Okay, so it, it made me laugh that I saw, I think it was on Reddit, it might have been Twitter, that people were angry that uh, Shogun didn't do, like, this is Rocket League again. And it just made me laugh because, of course, that'd be so See, fake. I think, I think, it's got to be in the moment. Yeah, I, I, but, think, I, think, I yeah. think that really highlights the level of understanding that Reddit has as a whole on casters. Like, there were some really great minds in that whole subreddit but it's like mate no <laughs> like you can only do that once every other time but it's either going to be a meme I will say or a forced that game area. six over time where dig had just got it over vitality i think it was like yeah five minutes into yeah over time that was nuts good Mm, yeah, so that, that 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 was fucking insane. I think that was also the, the clip that made it to front page of the subreddit, where it was like you know yeah. the audience cheering for like the ridiculous sequence of shot save, shot save, shot save, um, uh, which uh, I, I think all in all. Uh, 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 I, I think all it all just really made sort of Renner Vitality sort of run even more amazing, essentially. The fact that they were able to go to so many game fives and sevens, the fact that they had so much time of overtime. I think of all the teams that were there, they probably had the the, the, the longest total overtime. Uh, what was it? 126, 104, 149 in the NRG series. Um, uh, they had 4 minutes 25 in the E United series. Uh, they had a the fucking 5 minute overtime plus 8 seconds in the game before it on the Dignitas series. And then a minute and 12 in game four of NRG and 21 seconds at the very end of that series it's like <laughs> how much fucking Rocket League did these guys play like it was absolutely insane and again they still came out on they still came out on top for, for a lot of those uh, scenarios again the only series that they actually lost was against NRG and Reno mm. Vitality like I think that you know, when it comes to a land team, like they've, they've, they've kind of shown that they can still compete at that top little end. Like, I think a lot of us expected them to have a really good time in the RLCS. Um, I don't think we actually rated them as highly as they did back when they won the World Championship. But if they were able to do it here, I think we had to have to, must have, I think we would have had to revise our previous statements, Bacon. I think for me, I thought Vitality is going to come out in the semifinals. If I remember my prediction bracket correctly, I thought it'd be a reciprocity NRG finals for Vitality drop into. Uh, reciprocity there and i thought it was going to be veloce versus nrg i thought eu was going to have an absolute stunner um a bit too heavy on the eu side maybe uh this time round. but you gotta give it to dig like it was fantastic their performance it's great to see him again and realistically their only problem at the moment or because we don't know how they would have done against nrg we didn't get to see that but their problem is vitality who we all knew coming into this weekend yeah day three is when they shine they've just got to make it through day one and two which they always just scrape by that's the vitality way greg and i don't know how you're going to fix that because it's been a long problem for them but Vitality, they never disappoint. Like, you cannot no. be disappointed in their last result here. They had taken it all the way. And I think, like, 
my problem with uh, bracket resets is that you can get that uh, you either get three different results from it. you get a team that do the bracket reset then drop you get a team that of course just drop it and they're gone what was the point in doing the game anyway that's fine or you get a team that you know break the bracket reset and then win uh, like we've seen before and generally those are really open and it's just a team that's completely on fire from the lower bracket and it's i i can't remember where we saw that last in rcs but it's just like a really anti-climatic bracket reset and you're just there like we could have done that after the first game and just been <laughs> you know let's not bother with the second uh, series once say it's season six um ba, 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 da, ba, 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 ba. yes it was with cloud nine being dig four one four one that's my point i fucking hate bracket resets purely for that point of just nah they didn't need nah, it man, I, thought, I thought bacon I, was singing the new aftershock intro then <laughs> <laughs> that's me from the uh oh dear man anyway um... I, I wish tractor would just like unmute himself for those little bits like just come on in <laughs> just like casually just sort of insert himself into the podcast whenever the fuck like, he feels like it like just for, I'm actually like, recording his audio i'm recording his yeah. audio for the uh for the for the audio version so i might just like <laughs> shove it in there for the sake of it so that way now he's blasted all Are over you the fucking telling spotify me and iTunes? the youtube version and the uh spotify version is the director's cut and you should go <laughs> listen to us the second time round for not only the aneurysms but hearing tractor's lovely voice <laughs> What a way to promote the podcast, Bacon. Holy hey. shit, I thought I was the one doing Where do we go for that podcast, here. Jay? <laughs> Spotify, iTunes, Google Podcasts, and all your other radio platforms of distribution, Anchor.fm, slash RL Aftershock. <laughs> Boy. Oh, my God. Anyway, um, right, back on topic with Red Aftershock Vitality. I... I, I want to query you about sort of like exhaustion from Vitality, because I don't think they look particularly exhausted in that grand final. Nope. If they didn't have to go so far against Dignitas, do you think that maybe they could have won the World Championship? See, I thought this was going to be like an easy win for NRG because of that exhaustion. You know, they had taken down Pittsburgh Knights. They then had to take down Dig. I was there thinking as well, oh, Vitality are really going to drop this. I was worried it was going to be a 4-1 to NRG purely from that exhaustion. But no, these lads stay free. It does not phase them. For me, I just feel like that overtime goal right at the end was probably a little bit anticlimactic. It could have been stronger because we got a much better OT goal from NRG back in game four. But still, Vitality, no. Exhaustion was not a problem. It was just that NRG are so fucking good at the moment. They're yeah. the combination of the perfect side. And I, I can't remember which of the uh, commentators said it on the English stream. But it's like Vitality, where you have that arguably young gum uh, player in Scrub Killer and Justin. You've got that old OG, essentially, in... Um, well, you've got the making the squad in Turbo Pulsar and k -Dop, And then you've got that just wild card known for their terrific skill in Garrett G and um, Fairy Pig. They're sort of very similar size in that way. And you just have it at the moment. Turbo Pulsar is too good. Like, I, I can't remember what cheesy tweet I put out or whatever. But it was that literally for NRG to win a land, they had to turbocharge their team. And it is... <laughs> purely turbo pulse what you can offer to a team we've seen it before what with river rats as well where he can just join any side heck it's how uh, northern gaming won their worlds he just fits into any side and is incredible he is a land boy as well that is where he pops off most but at the same time of course he is scary online nrg have picked up and i I don't know if they had to pay, of course, Dignitas for the transfer. I reckon it was just a breaking of contract, like it running out. But they have just had the best pickup ever in Rock League history. Yeah. A 300 IQ play with picking up Turbo here because that has just... Well, it's instantly shown now that it's a success. It has made the best team in Rock League at the moment. Well, I mean, again, NRG, they're the world champions now. They looked pretty fucking dominant doing so. The only team that gave them hell was Renault Vitality, essentially. Uh, you know, they, they, again, they... that's a problem with the format. Where that was yeah, the only I, team I, that I, sort I, of, yeah. I, I, will, I will say, like again, we've already made our gripes about the format. Obviously, I think it's still better than the last one for, for obvious reasons. Um, uh, uh, again, we need. I think we need a sixteen team of elimination bracket, and we wouldn't have these issues. But you know, again, NRG in the series that they had, the only team that gave them hell was Vitality. 
And uh, I think that really speaks volumes to how fucking good this team was. Um, uh, I didn't want to query about reciprocity, though. If they were able to like, come in on the same sort of level that we saw them online in Europe and were able to make it to those grand finals, I think you said it in the prediction show when you said something like, you know, the only team that has a chance of beating NRG would have been reciprocity. Yep. Do you think that that still potentially could have been a different outcome if, if reciprocity came in on the same level of form, had the same sort of performance that they had back at Valencia, back at fucking um, Summit, back yep. during the RLCS for the European stage. Do you think they would have gone through and beaten NLG? Yo, that's harsh. Because... I, I know, don't worry. Don't, I, I, I know it's I a tough fucking question. I don't think if Dig had taken down Vitality, I don't think Dig would have taken down NRG. I don't... Because it, the problem is it comes down to play styles, doesn't it? So with how fast and aggressive reciprocity can play if they're playing that valencia style you know where they were just so dominant because that did get picked up i think yeah reciprocity could have been down uh could have beaten nrg but i think yeah vitality out of that top six uh you know going through vitality were the only team there that could have done it and we saw how close they got literally game seven and one goal separating them in overtime. Everyone knew that. And again, I just wish that would have been the game which went to a nine-minute OT, not, of yeah. course, no own goal for that one. But I just wish that was the one which was the standout new record because that would have been so good. Yeah, man, like that would have been amazing. Um, I... I, I I, I don't really know what else we can say about NRG as a whole, to be honest. Like again, they are they proven themselves to be the dominant team in this one. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, I think the only caveat we can take away from the fact that is that EU is still dominant because you know Turbo was the guy that made that, that made this. He's roster. the reason they won. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think that Turbo again has sort of like left himself in a uh, in, in in at the top end of the scene or the top mm -hmm. end, the top spot essentially to be essentially considered the greatest player to have ever played Rocket League. I mean, he did get the MVP award. Like we said, we, I think that should have still gone to UK because of the weekend. But still, Turbo, yeah, would have been I think, second yeah, in again, line. For I, that. I feel, I, I feel like fucking Turbo. May well be again. I, I think he's. I think he's hotly contested again. We're gonna probably have this Best conversation. Time. Yeah, we're probably gonna have to cover this conversation at a later episode of AfterShock. And on that note, I'm actually gonna note that down to make sure that we actually do at some point. Final shot next week. Sometime. Final some hopefully maybe we don't fucking know. We're gonna have to figure that out later. Um, uh, but for this one, we have one more little thing we have to get through. Mm -hmm. That being the pick and predictions. For those of you that tuned in last week... Can I week, look at it now? Can I find the results, Jim? You are allowed to look at it, but you're not allowed to take a look at the points until after we go through each of them on stream. So no spoilers from you this time, sir. I went back and I watched the old fucking, uh, mm. uh, the, the old fucking thing and um, uh, 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 I, I I, the, the, the old prediction show. And I remember you fucking spoiling it. So I made sure to put into place this idea of you not spoiling the fucking results. So yes, if you were watching last week, you will know that uh, several of us made predictions. In particular, myself and Bacon, obviously, made our uh, mm -hmm. made our bracket predictions. Uh, we've, uh, we were joined by Phalius, Trox from the social media team, Dexter from the mod team, and Jam, Jar of Jam, being, our, uh, um, being one of the guys that have guested being on the, the show. Uh, <laughs> being the Jam Jar, according to Tractor. <laughs> being one of the guys that have guested on the show in the past, and of course, a really good friend and a really good cast to, about to us both. We all made our predictions. And if you've been following the Twitter over the last few days, you'll know that we were updating you as time went on. We didn't give you the final scores. Man, we're going to do that right now live here on Aftershock. We'll start with Phalius. Um, if you want to click on that tab, now is the time to do so because Which he's got 39. Yeah, yeah. That's the one that I'm on right now. 39 of out of 95 uh, is, is, is his final sort of results. Um, uh, and I will say that a uh, special shout out to Phalius on this one because uh, he made the he had the tagline, don't sleep on the peeps. Um, but on the final day, I love this. <laughs> on the final day, he literally slept through Pittsburgh Knights' his fucking uh, matchup. So he said, don't sleep on the peeps and he literally slept on the peeps. So I just fucking, I just had to make that a thing. So, mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, you know, Phalius, uh, uh, top of memes, and not a bad score considering the amount of red that we have on this on this, on, on this street. I'm, I'm just more proud I knew going into day two, because we posted this out, I had 45 points going into day two, like day three. So I'm, I'm happy that still my results are there. But yeah, looking at his bracket, he, he did pretty good. I think... This was a very... Uh, we, everyone's going to have a problem with everyone thought reciprocity was yeah. going to be going far. So everyone's lost that. But interesting that before everything, he believed in E United and Space Station and NRG. He had... And Pittsburgh, 
he had all four NA teams making it. Um, Phileas, I think you're in the wrong podcast here, buddy. This is an <laughs> EU podcast, and uh, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to uh, review his employment here. I'll have to mm-hmm. shop and figure out whether or not he's still worthy to be. I think this on is the, high uh, treason. Yeah, this um, is this is very treason at the moment. But uh, he paid the price. Might have for to demo him to washing the dishes. <laughs> Please tell me you unmuted yourself for that traitor. <laughs> Please. No? Uh, no fuck. No, no, God damn times. it. Uh, you, you, you can listen to that on the director's cut if you're not already watching, <laughs> if, you're, if you're watching on Twitch. Shit. Um, so yeah, let's move on and talk about Trox's prediction. Um, he scored 33. Uh, about six less, and uh, this comes off the back of a very shit Group B. I'm not going to lie. Sorry, Trox. You, you kind of mm. shit the bed on this one. Um, uh, uh, and in fairness, he kind of he kind of had it coming because he picked both Canberra and Three Sins to make it into those semis. It's just like, yeah, that, that's 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 not that's not on, mate. <laughs> that's not on. And that basically fucked his entire bracket because Three Sins mm. didn't make it to the. They neither team made it to the semis, and he had Dignitas versus Three Sins in that one. So. Uh, yeah, his Group B, I think, really crippled his chances in this one, Bacon. Yeah, and it, it's a little bit unfortunate with how the bracket goes because, of course, uh, Dig made it up you know, in the final results up into the uh, semifinals, the lower day, where he thought it was going to be a little bit lower. Um, interesting as well, he believed in United making the run uh, going through to the semifinals. A lot of belief then from the uh, two uh, meme social media managers in uh, United here, though. Um, yeah, no one really having belief in Veloce from those two. But again, he thought reciprocity was going to take it all. And that is what has hit him ever so hard because that is a lot of lost points. Yeah, I mean, we all lost points in that one, as you mentioned earlier. Uh, speaking of which, I definitely lost some fucking points for the reciprocity thing, as we're going to take a look at my page now. I scored 48 out of 95, so pretty, pretty Finally fucking good. Finally, a challenger for me. <laughs> <laughs> Wait for it. Uh, but you can see that I almost got my uh, uh, my group uh, my group uh, A sort of correct. I mm-hmm. wrongly predicted Renegades okay. to make it into the uh, into the semis. I, I think I had at least that much of a... Uh, I, had, I had a little bit too much faith in them. Uh, Veloce, the same thing as well, getting beaten out by Loki was another big upset that I don't think... I think I got the upsets the wrong way around. Mm. So um, uh, if I picked Loki above them and actually uh, had New United going forward, I would have had a, a perfect Group A. Uh, but uh, other than that, it was all it was pretty all right. Uh, group B, not so much, but again, that was the upset group. Uh, so, uh, you know, reciprocity, you can give some caveat points for that. Um, uh, Dingatas obviously showed me up and uh, managed to go through the whole fucking upper bracket uh, without, a, without a big loss. So there you go. Um, uh, mm-hmm. My playoffs... Had mostly everything right. Obviously, I got the points for Pittsburgh and Vitality, um, and I had Vitality going into the semis as well. Uh, but obviously, because Reciprocity crashed out in the group stage, I didn't get the points for the finals, and of course, the winner, which I thought was Reciprocity. So, 48 out of, uh, uh, well, uh, out of 95. Not too bad, Bacon. Like, as, as we said going into this, generally getting half points is a decent result. That's a good result. Because you got to think how many different factors there is to everything. So Jay's had a very commendable bracket here. And his biggest loss would be, again, down to reciprocity. And that's what's hit everyone so hard. He did well getting Veloce down to um, the sem- uh, the playoff, like, top six. Again, the first time we've seen that uh, because Fares and Trox didn't believe in them. Uh, good on the Space Station game, making it through the same Pittsburgh and Knights. Vitality as well. But, yeah, that reciprocity pick hurting him. And that is your biggest loss there. Yep. Um, as well as that, I, uh, I, mean, I honestly, I think, I think I can be proud your, of this one. Your A as well is perfect. We have to say almost, that. that almost is perfect. Incredible. Almost perfect. So, you know, um, my group mm. A? Yeah. I missed out the Velocity and Renegades pick. Are you on the right tab? Uh, yeah, I'm on yours. See, Velocity and Renegades. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Almost hmm? perfect. If I got those extra points, I would have made it the top oh, 50. They, they played each. Yeah, yeah. That way around. Whatever. So yeah, um, I think I can be proud considering I'm very shit at these games. Like I came, I came joint last in the first one, and I think Jam usurped me for second place uh, in in the second one. Uh, so uh, here we go, Bacon's results. He scored sixty six out of ninety fucking mm. five. <laughs> he smashed the shit out of everybody. The Best analyst EU right here. What would you expect otherwise? So I'm making it the two time. 
Oh That's my good. god, mate! He, he got fucking he, he he absolutely wrecked this fucking game real bad. Um, uh, so yeah, he he got most of the groups right. He messed up the Velocity and Renegade sort of results like I did, uh, which is fair enough. Mm-hmm. But you also messed up Loki, so you kind of lost points. Space in that Station as well. But you predicted Space Station. You predicted Dignitas. You predicted Dignitas into the Grand Finals. You lost the points of Reciprocity as standard, um, and you predicted Pittsburgh Knights to go in through the lower bracket as well. So. You, no, well, that's you what I mean. Space had... Station didn't. I didn't predict them to go to the third day. I thought they'd drop. Oh yeah, I think, um, yeah, so yeah, I, think, I, I think got you fucked Pittsburgh it up. luckily there, and the same with Dig. I got Dig very lucky through there. Um, but of course, I backed Reciprocity to go through, and it all sort of like tumbled again from Group B. But I am so fucking proud of my A bracket again. <laughs> Yeah, again, your your A bracket was pretty fucking you. good. You didn't have you didn't have a, a perfect bracket, but you did have a pretty decent one. The same thing mm. could also be said for the playoffs as well. You had reciprocity going to the finals, but that didn't that didn't matter too much because you still had NRG winning the whole thing, and they did. So you got the extra nine points, which Jeez. really catapulted you into the fucking lead. So you did yep. all right. Yeah, there you go. Bacon's bracket, not too fucking bad. Dexter's bracket as well wasn't too fucking bad because he got 56. 56? Which Respectful. is, um, uh, yeah, he, he did he did pretty good. He got almost the entire of Group A correct. Uh, the only one he didn't get uh, the only one he didn't get right was the low-key above Renegades result, which is uh, still fucking... I think they gave him a lot of points in that one. Dex actually in second place as a result of that, uh, as a result of that result. So uh, not too bad, I think, you know. Dex, yeah. I, I think I think he lost a lot of points, and if he had... Uh, and again, I, we, a lot of us lost points on Group B, but yeah, I, I think... Yeah, Group if, B fucked him hard. Yeah, Group B fucked us all hard. Um, uh, 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 but yeah, no, uh, and, and again, with Dignitas sort of making their way in through the upper bracket, like there were a lot of points lost on that Group B. I honestly think that if 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 he was able to predict uh, pr- uh, predict Group B a little bit better, and if he was able to make some of the more better decisions, he may have been able to challenge you for that top yep. uh, for that top position. Honestly, like he did really fucking good. Yeah, only ten points off, so that leaves one man, one jar, one. Um, you ready? Preservative product. To go check on left. One that non-perishable. Is <laughs> one non-perishable. So let's go click it right now, boys. Three, two, one. What did Jar Jam get? And fuck yes. <laughs> Boy. <laughs> Jam actually That's scored a lot of the lowest. Jam scored the lowest out of all of us, which I'm kind of shocked at, to be honest. And, uh, Hang uh, on. I- Why have you got Jam's vitality uh, for the finals in red? Has um, Jay done a boo boo? Uh, yeah, because he no, because he predicted the uh, he predicted vitality to make it into. Uh, oh no, I have done a boo boo. You're right. Excuse me. Mm. Fuck, I have done a fuck up. Hold on, I'm gonna update that real quick. See, this is the great Oopsie. thing about Google Docs that you can just sort of like make that happen right on there. The fly. Hang on, 25, 26, 26. There you go. Um, 32, that, I think that goes to now. <laughs> yeah, 32 is what he actually scored. So I fucked that up. He was one point behind Trox still. Um, uh, so uh, we did it, boys. Trox is not in last place by a single point. <laughs> by a single fucking point. <laughs> Which is, I think, even more funny <laughs> than the one that we had earlier. <laughs> yep. I like it. <laughs> so. To reveal your full standings, if from from first from from last to first, we had Jam at thirty two points, Trox at thirty two, uh, thirty three, Failius at thirty nine, me at forty eight, Dexter at fifty six. But Bacon, for the second time running, is the RL Aftershock Pick and Prediction winner for the Season Eight World Championship. I guess we'll do the post match pr- interview here, Bacon. Mm-hmm, How do mm-hmm. you feel after winning such an incredible trophy here? I mean, it was the expected result coming into this, so it'd be a disappointment if I got any other result. <laughs> Even coming second would be a pretty piss poor performance for me personally. So coming out quick. in first, <laughs> yeah, I a, a de- it, it was your average day at the office, really. There, the eternal J. <laughs> Smug fucker, mate. Oh my god. Do we all just over drink at spoons since we don't have to have a <laughs> <laughs> Nah, mate, we're not getting as drunk as I did, mate. No fucking chance. But yes, that is the pick and predictions rounded up. That is the world championship done. That is our penultimate show of the year done. Mm hmm. And I want to end off on a on a somber little point as well, actually, because I did want to give a shout out to the Aftershock community. Um, uh, this was the first time that we've actually been to a world championship since season five. Our Aftershock wasn't around since season five. That's where I actually conceptualized yeah. the whole idea. Um, but this one was one of those lands where it's like, 
a lot of people actually recognized us and me in particular actually a lot of people recognized me and uh, said in the one of the, the, the common comment that I always got was I really love what you're doing with RL Aftershock I think it's a great show I think it's important we're talking about these things um, and uh, you know I don't think any, we ever quantified how much we were doing in the terms of the Rocket League scene until seven, eight, nine people came up and told me that at LAN, which uh, I have to give a shout out to those people and shout out to all of you listening right now because uh, you are the guys that keep us wanting to fight for the for the right things for Rocket mm -hmm. League and you are the guys that keep us wanting to keep it going. Um, uh, uh, and the Paul Star one. Yes, Trox, thank you very much for pointing that out on the fucking Twitch chat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that but, was um, the best thing of the weekend, I have to say. <laughs> that, that's another story for another day, I want to say, Bacon. But yeah, thank you to you all again. Like, you know, it's such a great feeling as well to see that this World Championship is, has, it, it has uh, you know, seen so many great sort of fans coming out and again for us it really quantifies that which we're doing like we can take a look at the numbers all day we can see however many podcast streams we get on our on anchor we can see however many views we get on youtube um but to have people showing up to the land and literally telling us to our faces you guys are the heroes of the eu scene which is a comment i actually got that fucking hits home pretty hard dude mm. so thank you to the aftershock community thank you to the fans thank you to everyone who made this world championship what it was um uh, and i'm gonna do my fucking damn this to make sure that we have a end of year special because i think you guys have fucking earned it essentially i think that you guys uh deserve it to be honest um again thank you from the bottom of my heart you've truly made this world championship special for me in it specifically uh let alone the rest of the european scene what a fucking wholesome point coming out from such a show <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's Anyways. definitely beautiful. Like, I loved it at LAN, getting to meet everyone as well. Uh, big shout out as well. We have to give uh, to the subpar lads, Colin Stumpy, for doing the name badges. That yeah. is massive. Because at LAN events, of course, everyone knows each other online, but they don't particularly know each other by, like, say, faces and that, because, of course, you use profile pictures. Most people have uh, weeb ass girls, but hey, that's absolutely fine. <laughs> no judgment. Uh, I'm, I'm a Kirby man myself. Look at Discord. I've got an angry Kirby. I love the dude. Um, but yeah, just by going like writing the names down, brilliant idea. So subpar, massive pat on the back because you guys have just like made life so much easier at LAN and it made, and you and I've got rid of any awkwardness there is on day one. So big shout outs to them lads as well. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, a big shout out to everyone that's tuned in over the podcast today. Um, uh, we've got a, uh, uh, we've had a, a really saying, yeah, sort but of... I think it's just very yeah, temperamental. We should be back up Green went down a little bit, but we've gone and recorded. So yes, well, go to that's... the director's cut to catch what you just missed. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Trap the internet. Oh, and with that that's going to be the final chart of the RLCS World Championship I want to say and again thank you very much for tuning mm -hmm. into this live episode if you have been listening to the Twitch version I'll do the regular plugs of course you can find us on Twitch at twitch.tv slash RL Aftershock where we should be live next week fingers crossed I really am going to get the chance if we can get that show together uh, and as well as that you can find the podcast on Spotify Google Podcasts iTunes TuneIn and YouTube through the YouTube search function or through anchor.fm slash RL Aftershock we've got seven other audio platforms of distribution where of course you can go to anchor.fm slash RL Aftershock to find your favorite platform or request your favorite way to listen as well as that give us your feedback on the discord we want your mailbag questions for this final show of the year oh, yes, we want to know do. what you think on twitter at rl aftershock and of course we will hope to see you back here next time bacon any final words before we head off for another week uh just that maybe some people didn't like catch this on Twitter and that but sony have just announced their little attachment for your ps4 which uh adds little back plates i can't wait for that to come out i think it's like the 13th of january purely because i can then quick spam so much more water saves in game <laughs> and that is fantastic that is the spirit of rockley right there and thank you sony for you know facilitating that need and on that note we're gonna end thank you very much for watching and we'll see you back here next week for even more of the aftershock